New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. The girls are big and the apples are round. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. The girls are big and the apples are round. New York, New York, it's a wonderful Town. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, let's have a look what's going on. Okay, smash that like button, folks. That's first thing to do smash that like button folks okay all right let's make this official first thing to commence okay we have the music now for the introductions <laughs> okay good evening one and all newcomers squad members alike you are in tune too do not adjust your sets you are in tune too live boxing talk with rafi episode 24 and that's not including the weekend shows those are additional they have their own numbers I think we're on six there. But this is specifically Boxing Talk with Rafi. The name of the channel, Raphael Dawkins Combat Radio. Let's get this music up a little bit louder. Hope everyone is well. Looks like everyone smashed that like button. That's the proper start. That's the way we do things around here. That's the way we start it off. And where are we? To make this thing even more official, what we do is we select a video or I select a video from the catalog. And that helps us warm up the area. So you will be treated to one of my videos, a retro video. These, don't, these days I go retro. I go into the back catalog. Select something some of you may never have seen before. And those who have, you may have forgotten. So scrolling through. Okay, this looks like a good one. <laughs> that looks like an even better one. <laughs> okay. Let's select. And share. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Looks like we're sharing. One second. Let's make sure the levels are high. That's good enough. Let's get a big screen. Let's go for the big screen. What about the full screen? Yeah, that looks even better. Oh. First and foremost, let's kill the music. Boom. Full screen. Am I sharing? I think I'm sharing. Boom. It's Raphael Dawkins, Combat Radio. And today, we're looking back at the interview given by Tito, no, 
Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz is manager. And in that interview, it was very revealing. In that interview, an emotional wrote Jay Jimenez, Ortiz's manager, tells the story of how they are sad, they are, they're upset that their promoter didn't do his job. In his words, the promoter got too greedy. And that's what killed the deal. But without further ado, let's listen to what Jay Geminis said in regards to whose fault it was that the deal did not go through. Let's take a listen. Let's line this up. These are Jay Geminis's words about who was at fault for the deal falling through. Words, the words of Jay Geminis with relation to whose fault it was, whose fault was it? And he states, it was our fault all day. Our fault all day. And his last sentence was, it was greed. It was greed on the part of Ortiz's promoter out of Dade County, Florida. He went on to say, and I quote, the promoter promised Ortiz that there was an open checkbook. That's why the promoter was going for $10 million. He also goes on to say, that Ortiz was guaranteed five million dollars. That was Ortiz alone. That was strictly for Ortiz. The promoter's cut was on top of that. There was an agree. There was a, an offer in place where Ortiz would get five million dollars, not including the promoter's cut. The promoter's cut was separate from that. So that was five million dollars to Ortiz. That was his money, five million. But the promoter insisted, came back to Ortiz and his manager and insisted that there was an open checkbook and he, that he could get 10 million. Ortiz was satisfied with the five million allegedly, according to his manager. According to his manager, Ortiz was satisfied with the five million, but the promoter insisted that they would be foolish to accept the five mil because there was an open checkbook. So they said, okay, go ahead, go ahead and get the rest. But of course, that plan fell, fell foul. There wasn't an open checkbook. There was a certain amount allotted to the fighters and Ortiz's cut was five million, which incidentally, don't believe everything you read in the press. That five million was more than what Miller, the Miller's flat fee. That was a five million flat fee. Miller's flat fee was 4.8 million. It's been reported in multiple sources that the real figure flat fee for Miller was 4.8 million. He would have got a little bonus on top of that uh, with regards to uh, overseas pay-per-view, overseas revenue, that could have bumped him up to somewhere in the region of 6.5 million. That's Miller. But the flat fee for Miller was 4.8. That's for a 12-week training camp in the fight. The flat fee for Ortiz was 5 million. That's for a six-week training camp and the fight. So, 
certain people overseas are saying, well, Mills, well, 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 Ortiz is getting low board. He was actually getting high board. He was getting paid more for less week's work. And Ortiz is a man who is notorious, known to be in the gym regularly. It's his family and the gym, family and the gym. He doesn't do social media, said his manager, he's old school. But we know why he's old school, because he's actually old T's, yeah? Reputedly 39, 40, but most boxing fans aren't buying that. This guy is up there in age, seriously up there in age. And this is likely to be his last big payday. The only possible big payday anyone can envisage is a fight with Deontay Wilder. And would he get the same amount of money for a Deontay Wilder fight? Highly unlikely. So that is the Ortiz camp's word. They are saying that they are distraught. There's been lots of opinions. Many of us feel that there are various other reasons why Ortiz didn't want the fight, but his manager is swearing blind that they did actually want the fight. Maybe we were all wrong-footed. I don't know. Where is the truth? Did they want the fight? Did they not want the fight? Are they just coming out now and saying we really wanted it when in fact they really didn't? We don't know. All we do know is that in that interview on The Boxing Voice, Jay Jimenez, the manager of Luis Ortiz, said they were distraught that the deal didn't go through because of their greedy promoter. Where's the truth in all this? It's all like a one big tangle, one big web. Where's the truth? Where's the lies? Who knows? But that is the news. Jay Jimenez went on the boxing voice and sounded distraught that the deal had fallen through. What say you? What do you feel about this? It's Raphael Dawkins, Combat Radio. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. If you haven't tuned in to the live show, please do so. Wednesdays at 9 and Friday at 9, the live show. Check it out. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'm out. Stop sharing. Okay, let me get into the proper screen. Start the music. Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. So, we're back. That was the warm-in video. That was the warm-in video. And now we start proper. It's the proper start. Good to see people have populated the area. Let's see who's in here. Ped, bright and early. How's happening? What's happening? Pablo. Yes, yes, yes. Pablo Diablo. Toby Bartlett. Bright and early. Good evening, Pablo. The Ped. I already mentioned your Ped. Come on, don't be greedy. Tommy Temper. The Tommy Temper. Running late as per usual. <laughs> John Dealey up in the place. Pablo Diablo, AA Boxing and Blunts, originally from Scotland, now in the Leeds. Doesn't want to come too far south. Feminine Angry Dwarf, yes, yes, yes. Who else you got in here? 
red gloved militant and his message is if you did not smash the like button you did not do your job <laughs> i like that one who else we got the boxing jedi up in this bizzle big boys boxing all the way down under in kiwi land what time is it? it's probably about 6 30 down there the boxing big boys boxing is an early riser yes 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 hamed 92 up in this bizzle whatever that means <laughs> wow the chat is moving fast already it's moving fast <laughs> i'll told him no boxing jedi said i'll told him no so ortiz sat down take a seat get this smoke up in the place in the building Dr. Wudak up in the bizzle. Good evening to you. It's 8 a.m. Tuesday. Okay, it's a bit later than I thought. 8 a.m. Tuesday. That's a more that's a more reasonable time. Well, the boxing Jedi asked me if I'm frying fish today. Am I gonna be frying fish? Well. We have, well, hey, whew, what a weekend of boxing we have had. What a weekend of boxing we have had. Damn. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? Pom, 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 pom. Where do I begin? It's crazy. It's been crazy out there. Let me cut the music for a while. We know when I go into deep concentration and deep meditation, I need to cut the music just to, just to, just to get my thoughts together. Sometimes I need to cut the music. I need to cut the music because it's been so busy this weekend. It's been a one hell of a crazy weekend. One hell of a crazy weekend. Let me start with the fight which I found the least interesting. Let's bring the beats back. Bring the beat back. Bring the beat back. Let me start with the, the, the fight. Ruben Guerrero up in this bizzle. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. And for anybody, any copyright issues, whenever I sing, it's for pure comedy purposes only. It's for pure comedy purposes only. <laughs> the back elbow. Yeah, we come into that, Boxing Jedi. Don't worry yourself. We definitely come into that. <laughs> Mad things. No, people are guessing which fight I found the least intro. One back. <laughs> One back. People are wondering which fight I found the least interesting this weekend, and nobody's got it right yet nobody's got it right yet come on keep them coming which which fight bored me to tears which fight made me fall asleep come on guys which fight made me for want to fall asleep in fact i did new york new york great film nobody <laughs> ruben guerrero comes to the rescue Ruben Guerrero comes to that Warrington. Listen, believe you me, believe you me, if I didn't have this channel, there is no way on the God's green and lovely earth that I would have watched that fight. I would have been in the pub, maybe, just in case it was interesting. I'd have watched a couple of rounds and then I'd have gone about my business. Fuzzy in the building. Oh man, that fight. That fight, that fight, that fight. Oh. Oh. What can I say? 
<laughs> Let me take care of this imbecile. Let me take care of this imbecile. Okay, Mr. H Money. If you wanna if you wanna call in, then that can be arranged. But please don't mention the name of an imbecile on my channel. Okay? Don't mention the name of any kind of cloud cage chaser on my channel. Yeah? So, as a matter of fact, you need to learn some manners, my good friend. You need to learn some manners. Yeah? <laughs> as if. As if. As if. Yeah, casual alert. This imbecile. This imbecile doesn't show up when he was supposed to show up. Let me just let me just give him some time to let me just put this imbecile, give him some time to reflect on his folly and on his foolishness and his ridiculousness. <laughs> yeah, imbecile. Okay. Yeah, man. I don't know why they're trying to get up all up on my things. Why would a man? Why would a man want to sit down in another man's lap? But this guy is trying to, is trying to, is trying to get up in man's lap, and he's trying to bring another man's name, another, a worse, a worse, a worse rider than him, a worse rider than him. Trying to get up in the raft's lap. You know the raft can't accommodate such behavior, my friend. Whatever you do in your own personal time is entirely up to you. But over here, we're running a boxing channel. Yeah? So don't try and don't try and don't try and bring up some other fool. One plus one plus two. Yeah? That's one fool plus another fool equals two fools. Yeah, so you fools can go in a dark room or a cupboard and do whatever it is that you like to do. That you kind of, you fruity pebbles like to do. That's none of my concern. Yeah? If you want to sit in the next man's lap, that's entirely up to you, but it won't be my lap, my friend. Yeah? That's not the way I roll. Clearly, it's the way you roll. So you can take turns sitting on each other's laps, but don't bring none of that crap to Raphael Dawkins' combat radio channel. You don't bring that, you don't bring that type of behavior around here, son. Yeah? We do things a different way. We cater for the ladies. You understand? Cater for the ladies. You're always coming up here with the next man's with the next man's name in the back of your throat. You're running up here with the next man's name down the back of your throat. Is that how you roll? Well, well, well. My, my, my. We don't do that around here, son. Whatever is your pleasure is your pleasure. But, you know, we do things a different way. You understand? Don't come up in here with the next man's name in the back of your throat. Trying to bring it to me. Yeah? None of that around here, son. <laughs> Carl L. Back up in the building. Back up in the building. <laughs> Yo, if he comes back in here and he's got a next man's name up in his throat... Then you have my permission. Hall monitors, you have my permission to smack him with that naughty step. Put him on the naughty step. If he comes out, if he's talking boxing, that's a different matter. But if he comes up with another man's name in the back of his throat, put him on the naughty step again. I gave him a little time to cool out and reflect and to clear his throat. Yeah. I gave him time to sit down, relax, and to clear his throat. Remember that song? Let me clear my throat. Remember that? Okay. Man's coming up in here. 
trying to talk some different going on with some kind of different style he's got a different way of moving which is you know not really it's not the what we cater for it's not what we cater for if he wants to do what he wants to do with the next man whose name is calling up in a dark and cupboard then hey that's got nothing to do with us that's got nothing to do with us that's between them two that's for them to decide who's going to sit in whose lap first but don't bring the rafi's name into that that gabagio don't bring the rafi's name into that gabagio yeah that's for you that's for you and your friend to do what you like to do we over here we do boxing okay so don't come up in here with another man's name stuck in the back of your throat yeah you can barely talk you got the next man's name so far down your throat you can barely talk it's a wonder you can breathe what's wrong with some of these new jacks what's wrong with some of these new jacks these new cats they're doing things in a different way they're doing things in a in an unfamiliar style a style with which is a it's a different thing but anyway anyway let's get down to to boxing is the other guy is that is that guy you just mentioned in here too mr boxing jedi is that guy you just mentioned in here too crazy well if it was women it wouldn't be so bad they're men men in a cupboard men in a cupboard do your cupboard activities but we don't need to know remember that song we don't need to know about what you care to do with your so-called friend and your friend's friend <laughs> this imbecile has come back again the imbecile has come back again wow wow i tell you whew. let's get talking some boxing because the, the, this man is severely confused clearly he did not get any uh uh proper instruction so he doesn't know what to do with himself you don't know what to do with himself so he ends up doing certain things which you know is up to him you know yeah clearly uh keep that in the closet my friend okay big boys boxing says block the fool i i don't know man i want to give the guy a chance i want to give the guy a chance i want to give him a chance he's had two strikes he's had two strikes i think the fool just wants me to say ah oh, he wants to go, oh, Rafi blocked me. Rafi, Rafi blocked me. If he's cleared his throat yet. He's had two chances. Okay, let's get into the boxing. Let's get into the boxing. The fight I found the least. As a matter of fact, let, let me just take care of him for about half an hour. Let me take, where is the fool? I'm, I'm going to take care of him for half an hour. Give him a half hour time out. Where is the fool? Where is the fool? I can't even see. Oh, there he is. There he is. Let's give him a half an hour. Half an hour. Yeah. Let's just give him half an hour to cool down. What time is it? So he can come back in a quarter to ten. But then we can have some peace now. Okay. So the fight I found the least interesting over the weekend. The damn thing put me to sleep. The damn thing put me to sleep. <laughs> yeah it's that uh h no money h no <laughs> cal l cal l killing him well he killed himself but cal l's just telling you the method of his own suicide his method of his own demise cal l tells you very clearly you know okay warrington v galahad warrington v galahad do I believe Regis will smash Just Just Taylor? No, I think he'll be a 
I believe ultimately he wins, but I think that's a very tough fight. I don't think he's no walk in the park. That's Greg Jones. I don't know who the hell Greg Jones is. Never seen you, Greg Jones. Never heard of you, Greg Jones, but good to have you. Have you smashed the like button, Greg Jones? So, <laughs> white boy is in the building. I don't know who the hell white boy is. We got some new people. Hello, white boy. Never seen you before. Smash the like button. Good to have you. Haven't seen you in any of the videos. So, we'll see how you go. We'll keep an eye on you and guide you. Keep you on the path of righteousness, my friend. Keep you on the path of righteousness. Good man. Greg Jones said he did. Make Britain white again. White boy, it has been nice, not nice having you. And you, my friend, are a gunner. White boy says make Britain white again. My friend, if you study your history, you will find that the origins of Britain were far from white, my friend. I'm not going to tell you anymore. I'm going to leave you. You're, you're, you're gone. You're a gunner. You can go and do your research. Come back with a little bit of intellect. Yeah? I know it's probably too much. You never got the schooling that you needed at the time you needed it. But, you know, we're going to let you go away. He's gone. He's gone, John Deal. He's gone, man. Straight away. Straight away. 100%. He was gone immediately. You never got the schooling that you required in school. You never got the home. He's black, mate. Trust me. Come on. That. I mean, I can take an idiot. I can deal with an idiot, someone who don't know better, like H Money. He doesn't know how to act or conduct himself or what to do or, you know, he's in kind of cupboards. He's in cupboards doing silly things with his with his friend. <laughs> Going places with his friend. That's one thing. That's one thing. But <laughs> it don't kill the mood, bro. I, I grew up in, in this country back in the Dizay. I grew up in this country back in the Dizay when that was normal place, yeah? That was normal place. That was normal place. He ain't killed ish. You know, today is a much better day than it used to be, bro. Trust me. Trust me. It's a different England today. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it's far different from when I was a kid. You know, we had to get them hands right. We had to get them hands right just to deal with situations like that. We had to have hands, my friend. We had to have hands. And then as the years went by, we had to get feet too. You know, we had to get feet too. So that's small in comparison to back in the Dizay. Back in the Dizay, when we had to have hands and feet to deal with such individuals, my friends. A lot better today. It's a lot better today. Okay. Damn. This thing is so amped. <laughs> this, yo, I'm telling you, man, this ain't no joke. 100%. That's a straight block. That's a straight block. I mean, I can take people being silly. That's one thing. Yes, Toby Bartlett. I can take people being silly. Ross Clark up in the building. I can take people being silly, but something so blatantly ridiculous as somebody to come in and say something like that. Nah, sorry, bro. Go back and study your history. Go back and study your history. <laughs> Go back and study the history of this land. You know, it has, it has always been colorful. Yeah, it has always been colorful. Go back, go back. Just do a basic Google search on the original British. Just go back and do a Google search, my friend. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. Yes, today we use our minds and our intellects. <laughs> make blocking for a reason great again Raphael with the Philly shell the, hey, the Philly shell hey bro I had to learn to defend myself in infant school I had to learn to defend myself in infant school for those who don't know that's the age of five I had to I had to I had to study the arts at the age of five and one thing I learned and one thing I learned only one human race. Everybody comes from Africa, says John Dealey, and he's 100% correct. One thing I learned at the age of five was 
having my back to the wall was a great idea because then you can see everybody. Everybody. I was just talking about this to somebody the other day. I was having a conversation. I didn't mention that part of it. <laughs> I didn't mention that part of it, but I was talking to somebody, you know, they said, well, why have you always been into the martial arts? Why this? Why that? Why boxing? Why this? Why wrestling? And I said, bro, it was necessary. Back in the Dizzy, it was necessary. You know, me and my brother, we brought books from the library. Books on this, books on that self-defense every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah, back in the day, says Ross Clark in his era, you had to scrap it out when you had problems. Yo, we were scrapping on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> Raphael's 100% on this topic. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Right, let's get into it. The man's thrown, the man's thrown me off topic, but let's get back to topic. Let's get back on topic. Okay, right. So, Josh Warrington, Kid Galahad. <laughs> What's this? Piotric L. Piotric L. Good to have you in the house. Smash that like button. Yeah, it's just a phrase. Throwaway phrase. Throwaway phrase. Piotric L. Throwaway phase. Okay. Randy Orton in the building. Okay. So let's get back on topic now. Let's talk some boxing. Let's talk some boxing. Yes, good evening, sir. Smash that like button and hit the bell icon for notifications. Okay, so who enjoyed Heinrich Schmitz from the Deutschland, the motherland Deutschland in the building? In the building. Heinrich Schmitz, good evening, sir. How are you doing, my friend? Okay, so I watched Josh Warrington and Kid Galahad. Because I knew you guys would be watching it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I knew you guys would be watching it. And you guys were already asking me. Good evening, sir. Mr. Heinrich. And I know you guys would be watching it. You're going to be asking me questions about it. I said, you know, I'm going to have to watch this fight. Oh, my Lord. Mm. Well, yeah, you was right to an extent. He was right to an extent, Boxing Jedi. He was right to an extent. But I said Kid Galahad, the Engel Jim, Engel Jim connection, that was going to keep him out of the way of what Warrington normally does. I said he was going to keep him out of the way of Warrington's best work. And it did. It did. His evasiveness. That's the that's the guy, that's the um, Engel, that's the Brendan Engel Jim. Rest in peace, Brendan Engel. That's the Engel Jim. And uh, he didn't get hit very much at all. He didn't get hit very much at all. Some people say it was a robbery. I said, well, when I watched, because I heard the fight, I heard about the fight before I saw the fight. I heard about the fight before I saw the fight. And um, the thing, my issue, my issue, my issue with why I didn't have, I didn't have a problem with, with, what is it, Galahad, Kid Galahad. The reason I didn't have a problem with Galahad losing was because he was gra he was grappling grappling too much. That's not UFC. It was like stand up. It was like Greco Roman wrestling, which is a stand up form of wrestling, primarily standing up. It was like Greco Roman wrestling with 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 punching in between. Greco Roman wrestling with punching in between. So you know, I, I came to watch a boxing match. I came to watch a boxing match. I was thoroughly unentertained. The first couple, first couple of rounds were okay, but after that, no. Kid Galahad came to just grapple, stop the next man throwing, stop the next man throwing. Yeah, 
It was just you stand you stand up wrestling with some punching in between. It was ridiculous. It was utterly ridiculous. I heard the kid Galahad got robbed. <laughs> I heard that <laughs> I heard the kid grab I heard the kid Galahad got robbed. So I thought, okay, let me watch it now. Then so I watched it. It was grappling. It was a, it was a grappling, a cuddling contest. What the hell is that? I'm glad. I'm glad he lost. I'm glad he lost because he didn't come to box. I'm glad he lost. Yeah, definitely I'd throw hands in the 70s. No question about it. Yeah, so no, 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 no. I have no problem with Kid Galahad losing. That was that was ridiculous. That was horrible. I don't see nothing like that. I don't see boxing. If I watch a boxing match, I watch a boxing match. That was ridiculous. Out of the question. Out of line. Who in the chat enjoyed that fight? That's my question to you. Well, I take a sip. Well, I take a sip of what? Aloe water. Yeah. Yeah, kid, kid grapple hands. Who is my favorite cruiserweight? Cruiserweight is not something that I uh, particularly watch these days, but I know I certainly enjoyed the, uh, what's his name? Uh, we're coming on to cruiserweight in a bit. We're coming on to cruiserweight in a bit. I know you German guys, you like your cruiserweights. You got a few cruiserweights up there, you know, from the Eastern, Eastern Europe or wherever you are. Um, Usk, obviously. Usk, obviously, has moved up to heavyweight, so he's not cruiserweight anymore. Obviously, we've got the WW World Series going on now for the cruiserweights. We're going to come to the cruiserweights and come to the elbow shortly. Hollyfield, <laughs> yeah, that's a call. That's a call. Favorite cruiserweight of all time, yeah. Boxing Jedi, I said it. Evander, whole real deal. Real, done real deal, Holyfield. All-time Holyfield, hands down. Usk is the latter-day top guy, but now he's a heavyweight now. All-time Holyfield, easily, all day. Didn't live up to the hype. Are you talking about the, it was, I thought it was a decent fight. Okay, Pablo thought it was a decent fight. Uh, didn't live up to the hype. I thought it, I thought, I, it was what, kind of what I expected to be, but worse. I thought Kid Galahad wouldn't be engaging. I thought he'd be engaging his feet to move out of the way. I mean, the Ingle Gym, I have to rate it. I mean, some of you probably too young to remember Errol, Harold Bomber Graham. That was my introduction to the Ingle Gym. Hemel, Harold Bomber Graham. Aaron Mason up in the BI. Errol Bomber Graham. He was the original Ingle Gym guy to me. Before all of your, your Nassim Hamids and the guys who came after him, Harold Bomber Graham was was the Don to me back in the day. His evasive skills were brilliant, but he would slip the punch in. But he'd punch as well. Slip, 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 punch. Slip, 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 bang. You know? And, uh, man, it was a sad day for me when I saw Harold Bomber Graham get taken out by the Hawk. You know the Hawk is. His real name escapes me for a second. I'm hoping somebody will help me. <laughs> Who was the hawk? The guy with the flat top. The flat top. One of the best. One of the heavy. One of the the best knockout punches. No, 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 no. The best knockout punches punches in the history. It was a huge KO. Who knocked him out? What's what's the guy's name? The hawk. What's the hawk? Julian Jackson. Thank you. Ross Clark came to the rescue. Julian Jackson. The biggest heavyweight, not the heavyweight, the biggest puncher, arguably, in the history of the game. Breedis needs to get DQ'd for that. Breezel, I mean, Breedis needs to get DQ'd for what he did. Julian the Hawk Jackson. Oh, man. Yo, uh, John Dealey says the best middleweight puncher, but I think the best puncher hands down. One of the best knockout artists that I've ever seen. One of the best knockout artists that I've ever seen, as far as Breedis in the World Boxing Series, the Cruiserweight division. What he did. I got no time for that, whatever. 
bird needs to be dq'd well if people want to talk about that now we can talk about that now because i've got an angle that everybody else has missed you want to talk about that now you want to talk about the elbow now we can talk about the elbow right now did you guys know wilder having a yeah wilder's got a brother He's got a brother called um, Marcellus. Big Boys Boxing says, Ernie Shavers, the best KO artist for me. Ernie Shavers, I remember Ernie Shavers. I remember him KOing people, but I've never gone back to research him. I remember him, and I remember he was a crisp, crisp guy. Put people to sleep, but I've never gone back as an adult and researched him. I need to do that. You ready? Heinrich Schmidt's ready to talk about the elbow. Tony Bartlett's ready to talk about the elbow. <laughs> How do you count after the round's over? John Dealey says Glowacki was also dirty. Yes, he was. He was also dirty, but I think there's levels in gravity. I think if you poke somebody in the eye and then they shoot you, you are both dirty. But there's levels. I would argue there's levels. There's levels to the thing. And I think uh, Breedis was far dirtier, far, far dirtier. <laughs> Heinrich Schmidt says, Car Charlie Zentoff. <laughs> yeah, Marcellus uh, got a drug-cheating brother called, um, I mean, Deontay's got a drug-cheating brother called Marcellus. Yeah, that his drug-cheat thing has been covered up. Nobody's going to talk about it. And then he's going to come back in a few months' time like nothing ever happened. Yeah, Ross Clark says Shavers sadly never won a title. That's sad. That's sad. That's sad. Red Glove Milton says I agree. Agree with what, bro? Agree with what? Oh, you're talking about the gra the gra the, 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 the the levels, the levels, the gravity. Yeah. If one man can poke a next man in the eye, that was bad. The next man shoots him, that's even worse. There's levels, in my humble opinion. Aaron Mason says Warrington versus Galahad was the worst fight. That thing was terrible. If it wasn't for you guys, I would never have wasted my time and watched that. I had a I sensed it. I could smell it. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly. Big boys boxing says some says dirty. Some say dirty boxing begets dirty boxing. Or retaliating with an elbow is over the top. It's way over the top. We retaliate with a punch. You retaliated with a technique is with, which is not which is not within the marquee of Queensbury rules. Retaliate with something that's in the well, punch behind the head's not in the rules, but retaliate with a punch then. But you don't retaliate with some muta elbow. What is this? One back? Is this one back? John Dealey says Shavers had a suspect chin. You see, I don't know enough about Chambers. I just know about his punch, and I knew he would never emerge as champion. I didn't know about the chin thing. Didn't know about the chin thing, the chin allegation. Pernell Whitaker, he was he wasn't a great puncher. Was Pernell Pernell Whitaker a great puncher? This is in my distant memory. A lot of these guys research this thing. I'm going by memory. Was he a great puncher? I just remember him moving around a lot. He's a great mover around her. It's great when he came to moving around for sure. For sure. Heinrich Smith says this is literally the best boxing live chat going. German chats are crap in comparison. That's why Heinrich Smith keeps coming back to live boxing talk with Rafi. Appreciate you, Heinrich. Spread the words to your German comrades. Spread the word to your German comrades to come to boxing talk live boxing talk with Rafi there are only 24 episodes in Red Glove Militant says he could have taken the high road listen he could have punched him back in the back of the head but elbowing him in the jaw no I'm sorry I draw the line Ross Clark said Shavers had a good chin he had stamina issues mm -hmm. yeah one back elbow is literally over the top what if he'd have kicked him in the head what if you're doing a high kick to the head? What if you're doing a Mutai kick to the head? Would, would, would that be cool as well? No. No. Big Boys Boxing says it makes me want to see Breedis get knocked the mm out. Me too. 
Me too, to be frank. That was just over the top. It's the wrong game. It's tolerated in certain types of fights, but not in boxing. Boxing Librarian Live says shavers could be hurt, but the danger was in range to hit him with the power shots. He could wipe you out. Yeah, when you, that's what I remember. If you got within his range, you were also in his range. So pow, 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 pow. Sweet P had great technique. I don't remember him being a power puncher, though. Greg Jones says Sweet P had great technique. I concur, but I don't remember Sweet P being a power puncher. Boxing librarian, maybe you. Maybe you want to be one of the ones that remembers. I was talking about the Ingle Gym. And uh, I was talking about why I was reluctant to watch the Kid Galahad fight versus, versus Warrington. Because I had a feeling there was going to be a lot of footwork involved from Kid Galahad. Those Ingle boys, they know how to get out of the way of a punch, generally speaking. But I said the first Ingle guy that I could recall, I didn't know he was an Ingle guy. The guy that I really admired was Harold Bomber Graham. Never gets spoken about anymore. Boxing librarian, surely you remember. Surely you remember. Harold Bomber Graham. Now, guys, sometimes I can't get to every single post. I often miss them, and sometimes when I watch them back to put the timestamp, when I watch the thing back to put the timestamp in, I see somebody said something very interesting, which I have missed. So I will apologize in advance. I can't catch everything. Sugar Ray Leonard, best, best boxer. Julian Jackson, the best puncher in the middleweight. The best puncher I've ever seen in the middleweight. Knockout puncher, that is. Although it wasn't my favorite. Marvin Hagler's my favorite. All-time middleweight. One of my favorite boxers altogether. Only second behind Ali, for me personally. Not that he was better than everybody else. Just I just love his style. I love his work rate. I love his workmanship. I love the way he just went about his business. Talking about marvelous Marvin Hagler. I like the way he just quietly did his job. He was fantastic. Didn't talk very much. Just got in there and wreaked. Did, did, I was going to say, didn't even wreak havoc. He just took systematically, broke people down. Michael Watson was just, he never gets mentioned, you said, but he was just at the beginning of his career. Michael Watson was just a fledgling in the beginning of his career. So that's why, you know, he never really gets mentioned that much. He never got a chance to blossom. Never got a chance to blossom. Boxing Librarian says, yeah, the Ingle Gym is famous for drilling fighters for months on range and footwork. Yeah, Raph, I remember Harold Bomber Graham. Harold Bomber Graham was one of my favorites back in the Dizzy. When I were a little lad. When I were a wee lad. Uh, I don't know enough about Gowaki's history to say his chin shut now. But certainly he was dropping, dropping like nine pins the other night as a result of the. Uh... Yeah, when was Marcellus cleared as a result of the elbow? He was dropping like nine pins after that. We're going to have to talk about that fight in detail now. There's so much going on. So much going on. <laughs> Hagler Hearns at middleweight, man, that makes me salivate. That's like, even hearing that is like dessert. Cheese. Yeah, we can't forget Gerald McClellan. Can't forget Gerald McClellan, says the boxing library. He wiped Julian Jackson out twice. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good shout with Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan. Yes, Gerald McLennan. But Gerald McLennan allegedly, you know, you know, the thing that I remember most about Gerald McLennan is not really in, in the ring. He's in the ring achievements. But it's like uh, the fact that one of his trainers was talking about him after the after the Ben situation, after he got, you know, what happened with Ben. And um, he said Gerald McLennan was a very mean guy. He said he was a very mean guy. Not that this reflects on his boxing, but I mean, I like the whole round person. I like the whole picture. And he said Gerald McLennan was a very mean person, you know. And uh, he said uh, he said that he was holding pads with Gerald McLennan, and Gerald McLennan took his whole front row out, took the whole front row of his teeth out with a punch. And uh, he said, "Yeah, he paid for it." 
you know, he, he bought the new teeth for him. But, you know, the trainer said to the trainer said to the interview, you know something? I think he meant it. I think he wanted to do it. Another thing with Jeremy McClellan, I, I know, you know, he shouldn't really talk about the, the ill people or what have you. But I can never forget what that trainer said. Also, I can't forget about Jeremy McClellan is that Emmanuel Stewart said that he was a mad guy. That Gerald McClellan, he was, he was a mad guy. I mean, you couldn't, you could talk to him and and, and and then he stopped the conversation about Gerald McClellan. He got so agitated talking about Gerald McClellan. It's almost as if he got the impression that Gerald McClellan went after him at some point. We know he punched up another trainer, took out the whole row of his teeth. So, you know, when I think about Gerald McClellan, there's so many stories about him being a mean person, a mean person. And that doesn't affect how you judge a boxer in the ring. No, 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 it doesn't. But it affects the way I think about him. You know, it affects the way I think about him. Um, okay. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, Red Glove Militant, you've come a long way. You've come a long way. Yeah, yeah, for, of course, of course, of course. I agree with the uh, boxing librarian. He said, uh, he said Graham was a really talented, really talented, but preferred to outbox fighters and pepper them with shots rather than a lot of holding. That's exactly how I remember Graham. That's exactly how I remember Harold Obama Graham. He threw shots. You know, you see Kid Galahad holding on for dear lights. Graham would, would dance around and pop, 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 pop. I remember a documentary about him back in the day where he just lie on the ropes with his hands be tied behind his backs and, and have people come and try and punch him. And he just, whoop, 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 whoop. he just move in all directions. This was pre Nazim Hamed. He just move in all directions. Nobody could touch him. He was amazing. Loved that guy. I was so sad. When he was out boxing, <laughs> when he's out, out boxing the Hawk, he was out boxing Julian, Julian Jackson, the Hawk. And I think it was the last round. He peppered him throughout. He was the middleweight championship for the world. And he had peppered Errol Graham. Errol Brummer Graham had peppered Julian, the Hawk Jackson all through the rounds. And if I'm going by memory, if it was the last round, maybe it was the last round. And Errol Graham had stayed out of the way of the Hawks' knockout punch. And he just had one lapse of... He got too cocky. He almost got cocky at the end, it seemed. And he was like, you know, doing a little dance and doing everything. The Hawk just uncorked on him. And Errol Bomber... I think it was the last round or the one before last. And Errol Bomber Graham was out before he hit the ground. It was just lights out. It was lights out. Lights out. It was sad. It was very, very sad. Yeah, he raised money for that. And apparently the sisters or the, the sisters or the relatives of McClellan, they weren't very appreciative. Man, there's a lot of questions going around. A lot of questions. Eubank had a hell of a chin. It was just a tough all over. Yeah, I like Ben. Ross Clark says he liked Ben more than Eubank. Yeah, I like Ben more than Eubank too. Aaron Mason said, who was an English fighter that paralyzed the American fighter that everyone expected to win? That was Nigel Ben, Nigel Ben versus Gerald McClellan. Gerald McClellan, one of the best punches at middleweight. One of the best fighters at middleweight. Took out Julian the Jackson. Julian the Hawk Jackson. Twice. Boxing librarian just reminded me of that. Twice. Good Lord. He was a beast. Okay, so I will continue. I will continue.
boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we're looking at a topic change. Boxing librarians there in the chat when you could jump on with me, keep me company, where he wants to talk to you guys. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> you could jump on for 10 minutes, boxing librarian. <laughs> Right, where are we? Yeah, jump on for 10 minutes. Share, come come and share some time with this boxing librarian. They like to hear your voice. Somebody told me they like to hear your voice. <laughs> right, okay. So, we've done the Warrington. We've done the Warrington, Josh Warrington, Kid Galahad. My, my verdict on that. In fact, you write it in the chats. Robbery or no robbery. Yeah, 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 for sure. Absolutely, John Dealey. The marvelous Marvin Haglin. Hagler. Love that guy. Love this fighting. Love that guy. Right, so in the chats. Okay, yeah, Ross Clark's in the gym. Right, so in the chat. Toby Bartlett, don't get jealous, Rafi. Jealous? Jealous? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, I'll try not to. I try, I'm not the most jelly guy in the world. I'm not the most jelly guy in the world. Um, but in the chat, the question is, people are going to get these smokes on his own different planet. All right. So the question is, in the chat, did you, oh, if you saw the fight, was it a robbery or no robbery? Kid Galahad versus Warrington. Robbery or no robbery? Marvelous Marvin Haglin, absolutely. Yeah. By the way, Rafi, what you make of Fury v. Miller? Ped Wars. <laughs> we come into that, man. We come into that. But, you know, live. No robbery, says Boxing Librarian. No robbery. Come on, advances. Let's populate the area with the answers. I watch this, guys, for you. Don't let me down. Not a robbery. But I had Galahad slightly ahead. Aaron Mason. Yeah, but Aaron Mason, remember, he's fighting the champ. Would you fight the champ like that? The hog fest? Would you use that? I mean, maybe you would use that strategy. The question is, guys, robbery or no robbery? Yeah. Robbery, Pablo Diablo, robbery or no robbery? People are distracted today. John Daly said, I don't want to see holding rewarded. For real. No robbery. The viewers got robbed. <laughs> exactly. No robbery. The viewers got robbed, says Ross Clark. Hey, it was close, though. And too much clinching for me. So I could go either way. Nay, robbery, said Red Glove Militant. Um, and, yeah, that's where that's where the verdict is, as far as I'm concerned. There was no robbery. I was hearing, oh, it's a robbery. It's a robbery. No. No. You hugged the guy. You clinched the guy to death. Uh, because yeah the only people who were robbed were the viewers yeah you clinched the guy to death no way no how you was you, you you fought i say you were scared of warrington's power you didn't want the open you didn't want to open open match yeah he didn't want to open match i hope there is yeah i hope there is not the most important thing we must petition we must petition the british boxing board of control Please do not give us a rematch. We do not want a rematch of that fight. Please don't do it. Helen Bond is in the building. I think for the second time, Helen, is this your second time in the building? The ref spoiled the fight. I think I think Galahad spoiled the fight. I think Galahad spoiled the fight. He just didn't want none of them hands. He didn't want them hands. No rematch, please. You know, I'm going to start a petition and have you guys sign it when I've done it and send it to the British Boxing Board of Control. Please, no rematch. Um, Buddha, L, Buddha, Buddha HLV. Who is the best cruiserweight at the moment, in your opinion? I don't know who you're talking to, Buddha. Are you talking to me or the chat? Everybody can chip in. I think Usk was the best cruiserweight. Now he's moved up. It's open. That's why we've got this, uh, this tournament, this round, this, this tournament. World Boxing Series tournament to find out who is the best at the moment. 
Okay, so we have concluded. Ahmed was the first hype job cir circus you Brits sent over. Hype job? I think he was a pretty damn good good fight. John Dealey says Dorticus. Dorticus just knocked out to Beely, to BT. Um, and he is a good shout. Dorticus. Ellen Bond. Ref should have should have yeah, 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 I get you. Ellen Bond said ref should have deducted a point off the kid. That would have changed the fight. But yeah, no rematch. Please, no rematch. Okay, so we have covered, we have covered the Josh Warrington kid Galahad debacle. I'll call it a debacle rather than a fight. Prince 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 Nassim was the real deal. A lot of people didn't like him, but I mean, I wasn't his biggest fan because he seemed a bit too cocky for seemed a bit too cocky, but he, you know, as far as his skills are concerned, he was a he was a hell of a fighter. Hell of a fighter. Barrera was just too quick for him. Yeah, Barrera was just too quick for him. Yeah, man. That would be nice. Uh, that would be nice, Boxing Librarian. Boxing Librarian is going to grace us. Grace us just for a quick 10 minutes. That's all it takes. That's all it takes around here. Let me, let me, let me send. Will it work this way? It never works this way. If it worked that way, I'd be highly surprised. Of course it doesn't. Never works the way they're supposed to be easy. You always have to go through. Let me find boxing librarian. Oh, here he is. It's easy. It's quick. There he is. Boom, boom. Paste and reach under. Grab the keyboard. Enter. And boom. I think I've sent it. Have I sent it? I think I have. I should have done. Let me check my levels. Whoa, that's way too high on the earphones. Um, boxing librarian. All right, let's get the music back and let's go to the next topic. Right, so every it's pretty obvious what people want to talk about. It's to, it's Breedis versus Glawaki. Glawaki. Breedis versus Glawaki. <laughs> Get this smoke, says Nigel Ben headbutted McClellan to pieces. I don't know about that. Um, whoa, we have where are we? Let's close that. Uh, you can send an invite. Yep, I think I've uh, think I've sent it. Where are we? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm gonna send it in that then. Boom, send it in that just in case you didn't get it the first time around. Did I not? Did I not send the? Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't send the. Maybe I didn't send the actual thing. Yeah, that's right. My bad. My bad. I didn't send the code. I didn't send the code. But now I have. Now I believe I have. And it looks like Boxing Librarian is going to be joining us in time for the new topic so where are we okay so we're talking about breedis versus glawaki let me just cut the music again because i need to concentrate for this because so many things happened so many things happened in this fight i need to cut the music so we i can be totally focused so i can be totally focused now one, two, Hello, one. Rafa. Thank you for inviting me on again, buddy. I see you're still doing that good work, good podcast, good topics. Hey, boxing librarian. This is like we go. I'm like I'm live like three times, three times in the week, and once on the weekend. So I, I believe in keeping the people fed, boxing librarian. Oh, absolutely, Rafa. Absolutely. Keep. Hey, you're very consistent. You're very consistent. That's good. I think consistency in all things, boxing library. And if it's one thing I've learned in life, is like consistency is the key to most things. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. You know, um, talent. I mean, I think when I was younger, I always thought talent was the key. Talent's not the key. Talent is not the key. You could be as talented as you want to be, but without the work rate, that talent isn't going to do anything for you. Yeah, I, I think you're totally right about that. Uh, talent will only take you so far. Uh, at the end of the day, you've got to have that dedication to your craft. Uh, and like you say, 
you may go on for two or three years doing really well, but at some point, if you don't have that dedication, it's going to catch up with you and you're going to fall off the horse, aren't you? 100% in any field, in any field you need. It's the guys who, you know, who was it? I don't know if you follow following Formula One. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about it for long. We're not going to talk about it for long. But there was a guy called Williams back in the Dizay. Um, he had his own, he had his own uh, team, the Williams team, who later became Williams Renault. And he had a car accident and got paralyzed. So then, oh wow, yeah. So then I used to follow that religiously, Formula One as a kid. So then he was like wheelchair bound, and somebody said of him. Somebody said of him, I remember this as a kid. He always said something I always remember. And he said that Williams is not... Oh, his team went on to be great, by the way. But he said, Williams is not, is not a particularly talented guy. But if he decides that he's going to run a marathon, he'll just put his shorts on, put his track shoes on, and he'll just run around at a steady pace, and he'll say, I will run this marathon. I will run this marathon. In other words, he was a testament to persistence. Yeah, and um, doing what needs to be done and dedication. Dedication. Never giving up. Never giving up. Just that hard work, dedication, just just being persistent at your craft. And I've seen it many, many times, um, even, in, even in boxing gyms, where a lesser talented guy has eclipsed uh, a more talented guy just because he was more consistent because he turned up to training when the other guy was losing. Absolutely. I'm a big believer in that. Um, someone like Lamar, he, he often beat fighters who were way more skilled than him because he was a fanatical trainer. He trained him send religiously and, uh, you know, that paid off in fights where he could often wear fighters down who could outbox him for a time. Um, and, you know, we've seen that a lot of times, um, yeah. you know, in, in boxing. So, yeah, 100% agree with you. Absolutely. And so after that little detour, we've only got boxing librarian for about 10 minutes. So we have to make the most of it. Why have I got a blank screen? Why am I not seeing myself? Is your screen blank? No, I can see you, Rafa. I can see okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay, that's cool. Right. So let's get into it then, boxing librarian. First of all, very uh, happy that you could join us, even though it's just for 10 minutes. So let's get into this um, Breedis versus Glowacki. Did you watch that fight? Uh, actually, that is the one fight I haven't watched. I've just done a hangout, and I was saying on end of hangout, right? I've caught up on Dorticos and um, Tabiti. Tabiti. So the one major fight I want to see now is the Glowacki and Brady's fight. I understand there's some controversy around the fight um, with the referee, etc. Um, so I'm very curious to see what went down there. I, I'm going to talk you all the way through, it and it's only two. It's only well, two point two and a bit round, so it's pretty easy to talk through. So. What happened is the first round, as I recall, it was pretty even. Um, yeah. I think it was in the second round when the ref was... break. Yeah, it was on a break. The ref was breaking him up. And uh, Glawaki kind of was coming around behind Breedis. And he just gave him a little rabbit punch around the back of the head. Anyway, Glawaki is on the right-hand side of Breedis. And Breedis just looks around and gives him a reverse, reverse elbow to the jaw. Oh, God. Yeah, reverse elbow to the jaw. Um, Glowacki thinks about it for half a second, then drops down. The referee walks um, Breedis over to a neutral corner or whatever, then comes back and uh, tap slaps slaps Glowacki on the arm and says, get up. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, wow. So, I mean... I mean, That's, really, that really that he could have Brady's could have been DQ'd. I've got to watch this fight. Brady's could have been DQ'd for that of on its own. Did the referee have no sight of it? Was he blindsided to it? No, or did sure. the referee actually see it? No, the referee was right there. He saw exactly what happened. He walks, he walks Oh Brady. wow. Yeah, terrible. He walks Brady's to a neutral corner, comes back to Glowacki, slaps him on the arm, says, get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean i'm shocked okay and i, I want to see even more now i mean one thing about it is from from boxing what we've seen those kind of moves can break fighters jaws can, it could. can destabilize fighters jaws it's, of course it could it it's, it's to me an obvious dq move it's something you, you should get dq i've for, said really. it myself i said it a lot of people are saying different things a lot of content i've heard content creators more than once say well, he, he, he fouled him first, so, you know, it's a foul for foul. And I'm like, no, yes, you're right. It is a foul for foul, but there's different levels of foul. The, the analogy I used was if I poke you in the eye, then I fouled you. But if you come back and shoot me in the back, 
yeah. <laughs> it's not like for like. It is not yeah, like Rafa, there's for levels. Like. There's levels to everything, and that's not like for like, mate. Um, so reverse elbows in. Uh, what, what happened after that? Okay, so <laughs> it was a cat. It was. It was. It was like. A, it was like a, a comedy of errors. It was like a comedy of errors because it was one error after another error. What was the next error? The next error, this was in the second round. Okay, the next error is that they continue fighting and then the bell rings. The referee, Bird, forgot his name, uh, Richard Bird, is it? Something Bird, the guy, same guy who refereed the uh, Conor McGregor v, um, v Mayweather fight, Bird. Uh, he doesn't hear the bell. We could hear it on the TV, um, but... I have to say, it was like a football crowd. The loud, the, uh, that's probably the loudest crowd I've ever heard. Chanting, very loud, very animated crowd. Apparently, he couldn't hear it in the ring. So the woman, bell woman, very nice looking, by the way. Uh, not that it matters. Bell ring woman is ringing the bell furiously, continuously, not just one ting, furiously ringing it. He doesn't hear it. Um, and then the action continues. Breedis, who later said, uh, allegedly later said he heard the bell and laughed, Breedis unleashes a barrage of shots after the bell and drops, uh, drops, drops uh, Glawaki. So he drops oh. him, and then the people in the corner where the bell is, they're waving furiously at the referee. They're waving furiously. Uh, Glawaki gets back up, and then the ref looks over and sees everybody waving. Then he calls the fight off. He says, it's over. It's over. <laughs> oh my god no, but it hasn't finished no it hasn't finished there that, that's not the end that's that's just one of the elements of the comedy of errors so oh, he, wave, wow. he, wa he waves the fight off and uh then he goes over to the corner because it's the break time so the glowacki sits down he goes over and they said you hear him saying it's the end of the round and he said oh oh so the trainer glowacki's trainer comes over to him and says go go and look after your fighter go and tend to your fighter so now it's not the end of the round. It's not the end of the fight. It's just the end of the round. Okay. <laughs> so, it's crazy. I'm telling you, it's crazy. You got to watch it. So what happens then is that round three starts. Glowak is all type of messed up. He's had an elbow. He's been battered after the after the belt. No, I think it. Ca I think after he gets up, he carries on. He carries on. He gets up and he, he restarts the fight after the bell, mind you. That's right. So after Glowak, he gets up in the end of second round. He carries the fight on, even though he was knocked out after the bell, knocked down after the bell. The fight carries on after the bell. So anyway, round three comes, and uh, he's been he's been battered now by this stage. Uh, oh God! A little bit of a barrage, and he just topples over. And then the ref just waves the fight off. He just waves it off. Absolute. <laughs> Mad. Was he uh, w w was he on Brady's payroll by any chance? The referee it sounds terrible. I mean, really, Rafa, I don't know what you think, but to me, from what happened, from I mean, w I agree with what you said. You know, yeah, foul for a foul, but you know, rabbit punching goes on a lot in nearly every fight. In virtually every fight, you can see rabbit punching going on, but in every fight, you don't see like elbow smashes to jaw. Uh, you know, to me, that's a very serious thing that a fighter should get DQ'd for instantly. You know, if you're rabbit punched, you can you can rabbit punch back. I like to ref. You know, tap back of your head, draw ref's attention to it. Obviously, from sounds of it, the ref, if Brady's tapped back of his head, would have immediately intervened on Brady's behalf, it sounds of it. Um, but elbow smashes to jaw, no, I think that's a DQ. And the thing happening after the bell, did you say that um, Bird, the referee, admitted that he'd actually heard the bell? Or, or no, didn't he? According, or he didn't hear the according, bell? According to Bird, he didn't hear, well, I believe he didn't hear the bell. I believe he didn't hear the bell. He didn't hear the bell. However, However, Breedis later on allegedly joked that he did hear the bell. <laughs> oh, wow. So Breedis so me, joked that he heard the bell. Do you know some of Rafa, what I'm thinking from sounds of it, uh, this may be unpopular what I'm going to say, but from the elbow smash, uh, the, the punching after the bell, which obviously would have affected Glowacki taking those clean shots, he should have either been given time to recover after the bell yeah. um, or the fight should have been called a no contest One and, and a rematch should be arranged. 100%. But I don't know if you can see your monitor at the moment. because this uh, is Yes, I can see. Yeah, you've got an image from the fight up. I can see that. Yeah. Right. This is an element that I haven't seen anybody cover nobody cover if you look over 
the shoulder, the left shoulder of Breedis. Yeah, I can see referee there. Yeah, no, uh, in the uh, beyond outer outside outside. Oh, of the with rope, glasses on. That's Adelaide Bird, the wife of. Yeah, the referee. Yeah, <laughs> someone mentioned. <laughs> someone mentioned this on the hangout. I did, Rafa. Yeah. Oh, somebody noticed like, it. Somebody noticed it. <laughs> that's got to be a conflict of interest, buddy. Come that on. surely. Come on, it's got to be a conflict of interest. It's got to be a conflict <laughs> of interest. Here's the ref, and there's his wife. The ref's refing, and his wife's a judge. You see, I, I, I don't, I don't know how much you dig into this. I don't dig into it too much, Rafa. But I've heard in my time that, you know, the governing bodies try and make sure that none of the judges know close friends or family of the fighters, that the referees impartial and everything else. So allowing. Uh, a husband and wife team to both officiate the same fight, one as a ref and one as a judge. Uh, Summit tells me that Adelaide Bird, if it had gone to overhands, might have scored it quite widely for Brady, despite sounds of it. Uh, oh, either that or her and her husband would have been having an argument when they got home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw this uh, picture. I saw this picture and I thought, no. First of all, I thought, what the hell is she doing still judging? Yeah, because she's not a very good judge in my book. A terrible judge. Terrible. She was involved with the Canelo thing. She's been involved in multiple scandals. And first of all, when I saw the picture, I thought, isn't that Adelaide Bird? And then yeah, I, yeah. And she's then very thought, distinct, isn't she? Very, 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 very distinct. And I thought, isn't she married to the ref? <laughs> and I thought, what the hell is going on here? Absolute and utter Madness boxing librarian. Wow. I think that should definitely be ruled a no contest. And I, I know it'll hold up the final. I know it'll cause a lot of mayhem, but surely with everything that went on, Glowacki didn't get a fair shake at whip from sounds of it. I am going to watch the fight um, so I can see um, exactly what happened, but I think it should be ruled a no contest and a rematch should be scheduled. One. But I don't think there will because of the money involved with the final and everything else. I don't think there will, but that would the, be my recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. There's the money involved plus the timetable, schedule, because really, I mean, you have to look at that guy as having a, having had a concussion. He's had several, several concussions. And isn't there a time limit whereby you have to, have to take three months out? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, it really would delay the fight. It probably wouldn't happen before next year if they did reschedule it. But like you said, Rafa, a, a good point that you expanded on a mine. With the timetable and the money involved, I don't think there's any way they're going to derail that final from happening between no Bradis and Dortikos. No way. I don't see happening one tiny bit. Not and, one. and if it, if I may, Rafa, the one recommendation I'd make to uh, Unier Dortikos, um, have your team have a good look at the officials before the fight. Um, you oh, know. Blimey. Oh, bloody <laughs> hell. At least make sure the ref's not married to one of the judges. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know? Blimey. I mean, come on. That's that's ridiculous. You know, what a conflict. What a, I thought I was the first one. I thought I was the only one to spot it. I spotted it this morning. I thought, do I make a video? I thought, no. Nah. I'm going to save it as an exclusive for the big good for the good people in the chat. But somebody on your side spotted it as well. Yeah, someone mentioned it on live chat on a hangout I did this evening, um, and and I was like, "Wow, that's really a conflict of interest." That was um, but crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm going to catch up on the fight and and uh, you know see what happens. But yeah, it's uh, terrible, really. Because Steve, Steve, you probably know yourself, Rafa. I mean, when you take a full blooded elbow to the face, that can concuss oh. you instantly. Oh, that can well. cause an instant concussion. Hey, hey, I tell you what, uh, an elbow to the face is like it's like a knee to the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's it can like, destabilize your jaw. It can leave your jaw never fully able to reset fully. It can cause a hell of a lot of damage. That should have been a definite disqualification on the spot. A yeah. disqualification on the spot is my opinion on that, Mister Boxing Librarian. Are you sticking around for another five, or are you shooting off? Uh, yeah, I can stick around for a little all bit right. longer, buddy. It's all, all good. Right. All right. Well, that's sweet. That's even better. That is even better. So we have covered, we have covered Breedis Glawaki. Boxing librarian says it should have been a DQ in his humble opinion. I say it should have been an instant DQ in my humble opinion also. Let me have a quick look through the chat. I see Tommy Temper is AWOL. We have Aaron Mason. And where's Ped? 
Where's Ped? Where's Ped Vetkin? Ped Vetkin is there. Aaron Mason and Ped Vetkin. So we do have hall monitors in operation. Okay, guys, I'm going to skip the chat element and I'm going to get straight in. What do you make of Fury living in America? Living in America. Uh, the Fury do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Fury. 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 <laughs> 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 uh, Aaron Mason. Aaron Mason. Fury didn't sing that, mate. That was uh, James Brown. Ha <laughs> ha. Boom boom. Boom boom. Yeah, yeah. James stage. Brown. Rocky Four. Yeah, yeah, Rocky Four. Living in America. Come on, help me out, boxing librarian. Ha ha. Hand to hand. <laughs> I was actually clubbing at the time that tune came out and uh, people went nuts for that tune. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> okay, so let's take advantage of the fact that we have Boxing Librarian here. Let me pick another subject we can get into. Let me pick something juicy. Let me pick a juicy one. <laughs> okay, this is juicy enough. Plenty of juicy stuff. It's gonna carry on over into Wednesday. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you the title and let you roll. Tyson Fury versus Schwartz was not drug tested. Yeah, I, I you know something, Rafa. I did actually catch part of that earlier. Um, oh, I haven't right. had a chance to go into it, but I am shocked if there was no drug testing for that fight. I think any fight at that level, there should be random blood testing anyway, uh, random blood and urine testing anyway. I've always argued that we need a worldwide drug testing body that handles testing in high-level fights um, and handles punishments, etc. It surprises me um, as well with Fury's background um, when he had his well-publicised problems that he's not having... Um, testing before his fights because a lot of people still hold it against him that he took um, whatever he took, the cocaine and everything else. Nandrolone, um, cocaine and Nandrolone, cocaine and Nandrolone. Yeah, Nandrolone, yeah. Mm. And if I was Tyson Fury, I would be on it just to keep my name really clean and not allow, um, not having drug testing to plant conspiracy theories everywhere that I'm on stuff. I, I'd want to keep, you know, very transparent on it, if you get me. One. So I am very surprised he's, he's not had drug testing for that fight. Yeah, uh, uh, somebody, uh, a source of mine, uh, furnished me with uh, an email that he received. He sent an email to VADA. They sent him an email back, um, the head lady, whose name escapes me, um, Margaret Good, 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 Goodwin, or Good, Good, Goodmark, Goodman, 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 um, and said, uh, we were not involved in any drug testing. So that was very, very, very surprising to me. Yes, um, it is to me as well, Rafa, yeah. Uh, crazy. All, all high-level fights. I, I understand the cost because the, the VAD, the testing and other testing is very, very costly. Mm. And I understand that promoters and net networks and, and managers can't afford to have all their fighters tested for every fight. But I think high profile fights are certainly all world title fights should have automatic testing. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, if you're the lineal champ, then surely you should have drug testing because every fight you have is a championship fight. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> Does that little laugh give you an indicator, Rafa? Yeah, he's false defense of the <laughs> lineal title. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, his lineal title is up for, up for grabs, wasn't he? Against Schwartz. Against Schwartz. It's a shame I can't play. I, I left it in the the in uh, Tommy Temper's little chat thing. I left uh, a, a video, I think, uh, of uh, his dad talking about uh, him defending his lineal against yes i am john Deere. yeah i just watched that rafa before I, I saw you'd gone live i saw your yeah. notification you were live and i'd actually just listened to that uh, uh video what you shared in there yeah yeah i, I think john fury is not aware of the many breaks in the lineal ship it doesn't actually go back to general sullivan for a start there's been breaks in it hilarious so you know the the, the thing I've, i don't want to drone on about lineal but i think even many of people who follow the lineal and chart the lineal and track the lineal I once was having a talk to two guys on Facebook in a private group where there's a load of people who study history at sport and they were arguing for hours in comments and I kept getting notification after notification and 
they both had like different criteria on what the judge lineal, how you lose it, how you win it, how you can reaward it. There were like no consistency there. And I think there's to a lot of people, they have a lot of different criteria when yeah. really they need to hone it down to right. To be lineal, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. But you get some people saying, no, well, you can have a new lineage created. You get others saying, no, you can't. It's a very inconsistent topic, I find, which does create great debates. You know, I'll say it creates great debates, but it's a very inconsistent topic to many people. And I'm still a bit confused on it myself. (laughs) It is a confusing area, but at the very most, at the very most, if we were to believe in that uh, Fury was lineal, it only goes back to Klitschko. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, because Lennox Lewis retired, of course. Um, You know, um, some people still argue Lennox Lewis is lineal champion now. I'm like, well, we can never have a lineal champion again if you have that mindset because he's never coming back um but yeah yeah it's a, it's a bit crazy talk really the the one thing rafa i don't know if you all guys in chat will agree with me on this but the one thing what i don't want this new lineal talk because fury now talks about the lineal title way more than he ever did because he realizes it's a good marketing tool yeah professing he's the lineal champion and you know uh unrivaled mentioned it were during the fight uh, the the telecast of the fight on ESPN, it were mentioned that it were lineal champion something like mm. 47 times. Wow. So they're really, really pushing it, you know. Um, wow. But the one thing I don't want it to allow is for Tyson Fury to think he can fight absolutely anybody Yeah. and then parade he's the best heavyweight in the world. He's, even though he's lineal champion, um, I think he should still fight top names. I, I don't think it should give him permission to fight any Tom, Dick or Harry, as we say in UK. Um, and get away with that in yeah. a way. Yeah, well, I think what's happened is what's happened. Is, well, I think that's exactly what's happening, isn't it? And um, because he's signed to ESPN now, they're going to ride with it. And so anybody, he, he can, it seems as if the route they're taking is he can fight anyone and say, the lineal championship is up for grabs. It's like, <laughs> it's like some old circus, some dog and pony circus show now. Where the days of old, where the champion of blah 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 of 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 Weymouth is coming to town, you know, and um, so yeah, so it's crazy. I think that what you say you don't want to happen. I think it's exactly what is happening, unfortunately, and that's one of the reasons I, I'm I'm one of the guys who's just saying, hey, holding this lineal thing up. Let's look at this lineal. No, absolutely not. Look at look at the flaws in this thing. Look at the flaws. Look at the flaws of you calling this man lineal. You know, I don't want him to be able to skirt around, just like you said, skirt around and fight these low-ranking, what I call low-hanging fruit, and uh, say, "Yep, I've just had it made another defense of my lineal championship." No, get in there with somebody who holds the belt. And remember, you, the fella never defended. The fella never defended his belts. So that's another argument that I have. The fella never defended his belts. So I don't think in the history of lineal, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but in the history of lineal, you ever had a guy who called himself lineal who never defended his belts. You know? Yeah, there actually has been a number of fighters who've been lineal and never defended belts, either through vacation of the title to go up to another way or retirement, things like that. But I agree with you. It's not normal. Um, It's rare that that happens. But I just don't like the idea that now... I mean, I I remember when um, Lennox Lewis and them were fighting, they weren't always babbling on that they were lineal champion. They were the world title belts. You know, they wanted the world title belts. And I think that not having the world title belts and Tyson Fury professing his lineal champion while defending it apparently against Sefer Safiri and Francesco yeah. Pianet. I mean, yeah. people attack the consistency of Wilder's opposition, but how about those two for Fury then if they are title defences? Terrible. I mean, they are terrible opponents. Terrible. Um, but w- one of the quick thing, Rafa, just yeah. on lineal is I, I've read tens of thousands of newspaper articles on all the fights back in the day. And when they mentioned titles, the lineal title was never, ever mentioned. You know, uh-huh. they... They would advertise fights for the World's Heavyweight Championship or the World Welterweight Championship or the World Middleweight Championship is on the line. The The word lineal, I don't remember even being used in the newspaper articles before the 1930s. Right. So, you know, but people list champions from before that because what they have done is they've retroactively gone back and done that yes. later. Yes. You know? 
Retro. They, they didn't track lineal champions from 1890. People nope. have gone back in time and traced the path back to create the lineal list yes. decades after the fact. So, you know, the whole thing to me is a bit up in the air and a bit topsy-turvy. Up in the air, topsy-turvy. Uh, Fury's dad came out in an interview. Um, I forget with who. If I remember, I'll post it up at some point somehow for you guys in the chat and people who come into the chat later so you can watch it. It is really comedic. It is highly comedic. It is highly funny. But one thing, boxing librarian, one thing that uh, I think help helps trap Fury into a bit of a corner is a statement made by his friend Billy Joe Saunders. I made a video of it earlier. I recommend everybody to go and check it out later after the show. Um, I think it's it's one of my last two videos where Billy Joe Saunders says, I would, he says, Fury would have beat any heavyweight on that effort that he just made with what doing what he just did to Schwartz. Any heavyweight in the land, any heavyweight born from his mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> Any heavyweight born from his mother's womb would have got beat by the Fury who was in that ring that night. And so my question is, well, if that's the case, I'm glad he said it because it, it helps kind of trap him in a corner. I'm glad he said it because if that's the case, then why are you fighting low-hanging fruit? Why don't you go for the top? Why don't you go for the top, guys, now? It's there. It's open. You can beat any heavyweight born from his mother's womb on that performance. So I'm holding you to that. Now, the next fight, I want to see you fighting someone in the top 10. Yes, I 100% agree with you. I were discussing this very thing on my Hangout, that I don't want to see him fight an Ajit Kavayal nope. or a Manuel Char nope. um, or anyone like that, or a Sergei Kuzmin um, or a Romanov or any young guns. I want him to fight a more legitimate fighter. Yes. Someone like a Joseph Parker. Um, I don't think he'll get the Kaunaki fight, even though John Fury on that video mentioned that, didn't he? The Polish he did. did. He did. He mentioned nobody, Kaunaki. Nobody, nobody seemed to know who Kaunaki was. He said that Polish guy, Kawa, yeah, Kawa, yeah. Kawa and everybody's like, who? Who? <laughs> but as I mentioned on my hangout, Rafa, I don't know if you agree, but, you know, with Wilder fighting Ortiz next and then uh, the Joshua Ruiz fight, more than likely going to happen. We still haven't had full confirmation of that yet. Mm. Um, negotiations ongoing. But I think in a way that Al Heyman may keep Kaunaki away from a potential Fury fight as a reserve in case after the Ortiz rematch, if Wilder wins, yeah. the Fury fight can't be made. Yeah. And I think that Heyman and PBC will keep Kaunaki as a reserve in case the Wilder Fury rematch can't be made early next year. I so then Deontay the Wilder I will fight Kaunaki the, instead. Yeah, I think that was the plan anyway. It was the plan was, and it was stated, the stated plan. I heard yeah, we're going to fight. Guys, yeah, yeah, Brazil, Ortiz, Ortiz and Kaunaki. Yeah, 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 Brazil, Ortiz, and then Kaunaki. That was the plan all along. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's highly likely and probable. I don't see them letting Kaunaki fight any, any, not, not, not uh, Ruiz, not uh, Joshua, and not Fury. They're keeping him for another hopeful highlight reel uh, for Wilder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the name um, who's not a very proven fighter is 20, you know, I think we're 14 KOs, Trevor Bryan, who's highly rated with WBA. From how this fight with Tom Schwartz was marketed, I could imagine him potentially going for that fight because Trevor Bryan's an American fighter. Yeah. He's unbeaten. They'll be advertising it. Well, well, Trevor Bryan's unbeaten. He's going to bring his A game. He's challenging for the lineal championship. And <laughs> I, I think Don King, you know, he, lo he, he loves a dollar or a pound note so I think he'd jump a chance to have a big money fight with Fury uh, for Trevor Bryan he tried to get him in as a replacement for Jarrow Miller didn't he for Joshua he did. um, so yeah that could be another potential uh, fight that really I wouldn't be overly interested in um, but you see Fury can market that like he did Schwartz saying oh he's two at WBO I can imagine Fury saying oh he's number one at WBA this guy he's unbeaten he's American you know I, I could see that happening I could see that happening easily. I could easily see that happening. But at least that would be a step up from uh, from Schwartz. Yeah, potentially. I mean, uh, Trevor Bryan is relatively unproven, but at least he's a big guy, fairly big guy. Yeah. He's unbeaten. Yeah. Decent puncher. Yeah. Against the level he's fought, so. And, uh, you know, uh, Schwartz caught, caught Fury with a couple of hooks. Yeah, noticeably a, a nice left hook he caught him in round one, didn't he? Lovely. Uh, I you thought... saw Fury moving his jaw. 
Yeah, I thought we might be in for because you know he ate the Snickers bar. He ate the Snickers bar at the way, and I thought, hold on a second, the Snickers <laughs> bar, the Snickers plus that lovely left hook. You know, um, I thought, hold on a second, is the impossible going to happen? And then a few seconds later, nah. <laughs> well, when Fury oh. went southpaw, he, he, all over. He, Schwartz just couldn't handle the southpaw stance for that lateral movement, could he? It just it but just it, dissected him from that point. But it's not the first time Fury's gone southpaw. We, we, he's known to switch. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. And you'd think that uh, Tom Schwartz would have maybe prepared for it a bit better or yeah. expected it. But when yeah. he switched it, Tom Schwartz seemed to just... He was all at sea. Bar, didn't he? he was all yeah. at sea. He was, he, he's like he never prepared for a southpaw. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And plus he's already got the bridge of his nose smashed in. And, you know, you know how that gets smashed in. It's by people coming through the guard. And then Fury just pounded him through that guard. High guard just put the punch straight through the middle of it. Few, um, what's his name? Schwartz had no head movement. No, he didn't. No, no. He had no head movement and no parry. Yeah, like like I said before the fight, Schwartz is a fairly standard European type straight, fighter. Straight you know, up stand down. straight up, chin yeah. straight up. Yeah. Uh, not much upper body movement. Nope. Um, just a standard fighter. Um, and to Fury, that's like that's like bacon and eggs. That's, I mean, that's bacon and eggs for Fury. Yeah, all day Fury's going to box his ears off. Yeah, he'll gobble that up all day long, all day long. Were well, you going to stick around for a few or uh, another ten? Yeah, minutes? yeah, yeah. I'll all stick right, good. All right, good. Boxing librarian loves his boxing, folks. Boxing librarian loves his boxing. I said I enticed him in with a ten minute bait. The little 10 minute bait dangled out in the water. He says, Yeah, I can do 10 minutes and then another 10. And then now we're on the third 10. Beautiful. Love it, it worked, Rafa. It worked beautiful, <laughs> buddy. Really did. Worked a treat. You got it. Yeah, listen, ladies and gentlemen in the chat, always use the right bait. <laughs> 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 okay. So we're going to take advantage of the company of the boxing librarian with us. And uh, I'm sure we got another juicy one on the topic list. Let me just go through this, AJ. Oh, should I go with that? I think I know which one I'm going to go with. I think I know which one I'm going to go with. Right. This is a big one. This is a big, fat, juicy cherry. Right. So It's not called Dominic Brazil, is it? No, oh, absolutely oh, not. Bad, no, not bad, it's, sorry. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's even juicier than that one. Right. So this is my, this is, this is my, I hope Eddie Hearn's listening tonight. Eddie Hearn, I hope your people have told you to listen in to the show tonight because I have got your new management strategy for Anthony Joshua. This is oh, my interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my recommendation. This is my recommendation. Uh, Eddie, Eddie Hearn is paying me a consultancy fee, let's say, and I'm in there in the boardroom in my best suit and my best silk shirt, and my best tie, and this is what I'm saying to Eddie Hearn for the new management strategy with for AJ, Anthony Joshua. Now, we see the way that both Wilder and Fury can spin a weak opponent into a strong opponent. So with, Fury, with Wilder, we say, well, well, he's the mandatory. No man is the mandatory with, <laughs> with Fury. It's well, he's number two ranked, he's number two ranked in the WBO. He's a and bloody... he's lineal, <laughs> and he's earned, he's earned his position to fight me for the lineal championship. He's number two ranked in the WBO, and he's number seven ranked in the IBF or something like that. Right, <laughs> going forward, Eddie Hearn. You see, you see, Wilder said something which is very interesting and very true. Between them, between Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel, um, aka the alien, no, that's harsh of me. Um, they have 30, 60 years of boxing involvement, management between them. 60 years, over half a decade. And the way they maneuver that guy. The way they feed him cherry after cherry like it's on a conveyor belt. I think Eddie Hearn shouldn't go deep into that rabbit hole like that. But I think when Eddie Hearn... I made the same mistake. I said Ruiz. I knew Ruiz to be a dangerous guy. I knew Ruiz to be a highly competent boxer. And Eddie Hearn was on the hunt 
for the most dangerous boxer that he could find that was available for Joshua in New York. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I was supporting that. I'm part of the problem. I was supporting that. I thought it was a good idea. But listen, I haven't got 60 years of back boxing knowledge and management under my belt. Wilder does now. And neither does uh, Eddie Hearn. Even with his dad, I mean, it's probably 30 years between the two of them. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now what should have happened in hindsight? Hindsight is 2020. But looking and watching and studying deeply what's happened over during that course of that fight and subsequently with the, with the Brazil fight for Wilder and the Schwartz fight for Fury, I've realized that what they should really have done is they should have done what both Fu Wilder's management done and what Fury's management done. They should have set him up with somebody who was going to allow him to get a spectacular knock knockout. <laughs> That's yeah, what they should yeah. have done. That's what they should have done, like boxing librarian. It was his debut in America, and they should have looked for a guy that was going to give him a spectacular knockout. Over to you. Uh, someone like, well, we're bringing over Ajit Kabayal. He's an yes. unbeaten 19 and 0 fighter with 13 knockouts. He's yes. rated in multiple alphabet bodies. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And he's challenging for the unified heavyweight titles. He's going to come on his A game. He's going to yeah. give his best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so how do you feel about that? Um, I think that really what, I mean, first of all, in Tyson Fury's case and really Deontay Wilder's case, despite someone saying earlier that Wilder had fought the best heavyweights of this generation, which I found a bit funny. Ridiculous. But going on their actual... Resume and how they've been marketed. Like, if you remember back, Rafa, when Deontay Wilder won his title against Ivan, which I thought were a very good performance from him in his first title fight, he went 12 rounds first yes, time. He fought fairly controlled, even though he were a bit excitable here or there. He yeah. kept to a game plan, he did well. Um, when they announced he were going to fight Eric Molina, I think a lot of people were disappointed, but Wilder's a master. Of, Oh, he's a tough guy. He's fighting the champion of the world. He's gonna, he's gonna up ten levels. He's gonna come into this ring and he's gonna give it his all. And he's gonna be trying to knock me out. And he's a dangerous guy. I'm giving him six week notice only, but he's still gonna be dangerous. And you know, really, it's quite masterful because when they've gone through with their opponents, they do that. And now Fury's doing that as well, isn't it? Um, and they've just got like the essence of spin nailed down nailed. to where they can sell it to a lot of fans who are more in and out of boxing, you know, who just look at the headlines and look at the headline fights, what they see on Saturday night, you know, not the real hardcore. So a lot of people buy that stuff and think, well, this guy is unbeaten. He's never lost. Yeah. You know, without really understanding the fighter or what his level of competition has been. So you've got to take you out after him in one way. It's very clever. Um, but I always worry about 10 years from now when people are looking back at the resumes of these guys. Absolutely. They're going to be saying they took advantage, they avoided this guy, that guy, that guy, they didn't fight this guy, they were fighting these weaker rated fighters. Um, you know, It'll make them a lot of money, it'll keep the records nice and clean, but I think in the long term, it'll have a more damaging effect on the legacy, um, even though they'll have lots of money um, yeah, for it. Absolutely, but, but you see, getting back to this New York debut... Getting back to the New York debut, my argument to you, argument to the chat is they should have picked somebody that would have allowed Joshua, in hindsight, in hindsight, that would have allowed Joshua to make a massive statement. Yeah, a vicious one or two round knockout where the yes. guy's laying prone for five minutes and yes. Joshua's there with his arms raised. Yeah, for his profile, I mean, that would have been the best way to announce himself in American market will like you say a spectacular knockout yes. because people remember knockouts and people would have watched that fight and thought, wow, he wiped that guy <laughs> out. When can I see this guy fight again? 100. And instead what we got yeah. is like you mentioned, Eddie Earn looked for the most dangerous opponent he could. Yep. Um, and in the end, Eddie Earn and Joshua have suffered disaster of being beaten. Um, and now Joshua's American debut has turned into a bit like the Titanic. It sank fast. It's cracked and sank fast. Um, and now they're going to have to have a job on rebuilding that process. The next time he goes to America, you know, he's going to be seen as, oh, well, the last time he came here, he got whipped. 
you know, is he going to yeah. get whipped again? Whereas, yeah. like you say, if they'd have set him up with a fight where, you know, because it wasn't his fault Miller, Miller failed tests and had no, to be withdrawn. So, really, whoever he chose, it would have been fairly understandable in a way because it's short cool. notice. Um, and, yeah, I think that would have been a good thing. I, I think you're speaking truth there. That would have been a good thing, especially for his profile and his impact in tech market. Yeah, yeah. You see, and deeper. When I go deeper into it, um, uh, oh, I'll give you this concept. It's still within the realms of what we're talking about. I'll give you this context uh, concept. Somebody wrote in one of my videos, somebody wrote a post, which I found find to be deeply true and profound. And it's this. Never in recent history, never before in recent history has the A side looked so weak. And I'll elaborate on that. I'll expand on that. Joshua and Hearn. Let's let's use an analogy. Joshua and Hearn were kings who were bowing down to peasants. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, please continue. But yeah, I think I know where you're going. Yeah, absolutely. They were kings bowing down to peasants. They were the A-side. Oh, Tommy Tempest joined us. Tommy Tempers come back. <laughs> there were kings bowing down to peasants. They were the A-side, and they were almost eager to appease. They were almost eager to appease. Let me go yes, deeper. Yes, let me go right. Let me go deeper. So, Fury, before before the the mishap with the, in 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 Madison. Let's call it the Madison Square Garden Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rafa, that's a good one. That's a good one. Before the Madison Square Garden, we'll, we'll remember this in boxing history. I have officially turned it and boxing librarian is my is my witness. I am the official. I want to go. I want to go down in the boxing history history books for this one. Well, I, well, actually, Rafa, we've had the Saint Valentine's Day massacre. Now we've yeah. got the Madison Square Garden massacre. The I Madison love that name. Madison Square it's... Garden massacre of June the first, twenty nineteen. Everyone remembers where they were. The and... MSGM. <laughs> <laughs> the Madison Square Garden massacre. Previous to the Madison Square Garden massacre. Joshua is offering now 40%. You, Wilder, you get 40. And he said, well, well, Joshua's lost, so it can't be 50-50 anymore, can it? Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It, can't, yeah, it can't be. Well, first of all, it wasn't fifty-fifty anyway. But 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 listen to the way he spins it. Listen to the cunning, devious way he spins it. He goes, "Well, it can't be fifty-fifty anymore, can it?" So already he's up. He's up. He's get, he's giving them a ten percent they weren't getting. Can't be fifty-fifty anymore, can it? All right, can't be fifty-fifty. Okay, nice, 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 slick maneuver there. So now Joshua's going to be. Oh, he's going to have to take much less than fifty now, isn't he? He's gonna to have to take much less than fifty. Well, let me de let me let me look at that. First of all, you weren't getting fifty percent, and now you're saying that Joshua, who still is the A side in comparison to you, forget about your your little paper paper lineal, paper Christmas hat lineal. Uh, Joshua is still going to be is the bigger draw. Joshua is still the bigger commercial draw, so he's still the A side with Fury. So now they have the audacity, and this is what I mean about kings bound down to peasants. They have the audacity to pretend that they are now in the driving seat because Joshua appeased them too much. If I if I can, Rafa, I'll jump yeah. in with two two yeah. two quick points. Yes, yeah, your, uh, your turn. First point is I I mentioned on a number of hangouts that Eddie and saying off. Oh, 12 million, then 15 million. No, we want the fight now. We'll offer you 30. No, we want the fight. You've turned it down. We'll offer you 35. Now we'll offer you 40. Then we no longer want the fight in UK. We'll entertain it in USA. Then we may consider 55, 45. Then we may consider 50, 50. I said, you, you, you are starting to sound way too desperate. You, you are starting to sound over desperate to get the fight. While he's, while he's rejecting all of these offers, these growing, escalating offers, it seemed almost like Joshua was begging in a way because they were just throwing offer after offer. So that's the first thing I really agree with you on. Joshua should have said, this is what you get. 
do you want it or not? No? Okay, right. Well, I'm going on and I'm fighting this dude. Come yeah. to me when you're willing to take the fight. Now, the second thing about, uh, just a quick point about what you said about Fran Warren. I, I heard him say that too. And that is a massive attempt to spin. Because as we know, Rafa, you probably realise yourself, as many people in chat do, the Andy Ruiz-Joshua fight, because of the shock upset that it was um, to many people, that rematch is going to generate so much money. It's going to generate way more money than what the first fight generated. Yes. You know, it's it's kind of like Joshua said, if I did lose, my comeback fight is likely going to be even bigger. So in reality, in a, in a rather bizarre twist of fate, Joshua losing will magnify the money that the rematch with Ruiz actually makes. So I use that point to say he hasn't lost the A-side status at all. He may have lost his first professional fight, but he's now going to generate even more money for the rematch to sit for people to see if he can, you know, you know, right the wrong, so to speak. So I don't think he's lost any of that A side um, advantage at all. For real, for real, for real. But you see, and all of those points I agree with. Now, here's here's the thing which you've touched on, which you've touched on very well, you've elaborated on. Here's the thing. Joshua was acting like the B side, not the A side. Team Joshua. Yes. Yes. Randall Stevens, big up. Get this smoke. Regular militant. They were acting like the B-side. They weren't acting like kings. They were not acting like kings. So that's where my statement comes from. Never before in recent times have we seen the A-side acting like... Have, have we seen the kings acting like peasants? We've never seen that before. We've never yeah, seen that before. And, and that's as a result of... Hearn's lack of experience in terms of in relation to the 60 years of boxing knowledge on the wilder side. Wow, yeah, that's that's actually a great way of putting it, Rafa, actually. And yeah, I think you're onto a really good point there. Yeah, they were just they, they were acting, you know, when someone's acting too nice, you know, you know, there's certain people who if you fight, they'll they'll apologize for you. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, yeah. And, and they were the side that somebody else is fighting and they're saying, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good way of putting it, actually. Okay. Yeah, you, you can't be that. You can't be. You have to learn what an A-side is. You have to learn. You have to look, look at the likes of, I know we don't like him for certain things, but you have to look at the likes of Mayweather. You have to look. To, you, if you want to see an A-side, look at Mayweather. Learn the ways of Mayweather. Learn how he acts. Do you know something, Rafa? Yeah. I, if I may, buddy, I we're going to raise Mayweather as a point. Like when he when he went for the first Madonna fight, um, you know, Madonna were offered the fight after that BS poll between him, him and Amir Khan. Amir Khan won, but then Floyd chose Madonna. But <laughs> Floyd yeah. went into that fight getting his guaranteed forty million under his Showtime deal. Madonna were paid, from what I understand, just under two million dollars. So I don't know what that is a percentage of that, uh, but two million from forty-two million is is a measly percentage. Um, but basically, Madonna were offered fight. Floyd were like, "I'm the big money draw. You're offered fight. Take it or leave it." If Madonna said, "No, I, I want ten million," Floyd would have told him to take an Ike and he'd have gone for someone else. You know, Floyd never bent to anybody in negotiations. You know, even Pacquiao, Floyd were like, no, you'll get this. No, you'll get this. I'm the big pay-per-view star. I'm the big money man. Um, you'll get what I tell you you're going to get. And, you know, Floyd did make considerable more. Pacquiao never got the 50-50 with Floyd that he campaigned for because Floyd would have never let the fight happen had that been the case. And I think, like you say, Joshua and Hearn, um, they should have had the same mentality. If you're after 50-50, then we'll fight Pulev and we'll fight Parker and uh, um, White again and we'll fight this guy and that guy. You know, uh, they shouldn't have bent and, and beg like they did. I, I, I really think it made them look too desperate. It made them look too desperate. And going forward, they have to learn. They have to learn not to... They have to learn how a side moves. I don't know how the word's going to get to them. I don't know if I'm going to have to start jumping on Twitter and talking to Eddie Hearn, but they are going to have to learn how to move as how A-sides move. Like I said before, there were kings acting like bowing to peasants. Yes, definitely, yeah. yeah. There were kings with a bowl of rice saying, do you want some food? 
So yeah. the for local farmers, yeah, uh, yeah, doesn't yeah. Work it, that way. it does. It does not work that way. They have to understand and have to learn how to move as a sides because they may, like you said, you've said it yourself. They made themselves look weak. Oh they, yes, I hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, they made themselves look weak, and if they get to the mountain top again, because there's no guarantees in this game. If they get to the mountain top again, they're going to have to learn the tricks of the trade from the likes of, from the likes of uh, the wilder side, the likes of Shelley Finkel, the likes of Al Heyman, and you know even the likes of Warren, because it seems to me now that Wilder was never interested. I've used the analogy before. Wilder was never interested in. I believe Wilder was never interested in the Joshua fight. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it's, it's not consistent. Taking the Joshua fight is not consistent with the way PBC move. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, PBC like control, um, and taking the Joshua fight would have give a lot of the negotiation control to Matchroom and Joshua. Um, Wilder would have really, really had very little say in what went on because Joshua was such a big draw. But you know, turning down so many offers and so many percentage offers. And Eddie and even saying, oh, we'll come to America now and we'll do this and that. It were quite clear to me that Deontay Wilder or his advisors or both um, were not really keen on taking that fight until they felt it would be in a position that would best suit them. Um, and sadly, it never got to that point um, due to Joshua being beat by Ruiz. But I, I spoke to someone and said, I still don't think Wilder will fight Josh. I were talking about, oh, if, if Joshua beats Ruiz, I said, while they're talking about this fight next year, I said, you can forget it. It's not going to happen. Because now Wilder's talking about wanting 100 million or something. And I'm just like, because he was like, no, it'll definitely happen in 2020. I'm like, you are joking. Deontay Wilder won't take that fight next year either. He just won't take it. For real, for real, for real. I think it's the analogy I use is like a girl who really doesn't want a guy. She's pretty and the guy's ugly. But the guy's got a bit of money. So she starts to think of the most, the most outrageous claim she could make where he'd say no. So she goes, well, yeah, um, I'll take you. You can take me out on a date as long as you take me to Paris. And he goes, <laughs> okay. And he goes okay, okay, okay. I'll take you to Paris. And he said, yeah, but it's got to be, you've got to fly me to Dover. And then we've got to go by yacht from Dover to Calais and then you've got to transport me yes John Dealey John Dealey to take care and don't let Tommy Temper try to steal you out of the out of out of the the live boxing talk with Rafi don't let Tommy Temper try to poach your son take no notice take care bro Okay, boxing librarian. Oh, John Dealey, is that the gent who debated John Tommy Dealey. Temper on? He's, uh, he's, he's one of our shining stars over here. We got people Ooh. trying to poach him away. Try to poach oh. him away. No poaching. Stay strong, John Dealey. Stay <laughs> strong. Just say no to poachers. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so she goes, yeah, you got to fly me over, and then you got to take me by private yacht. You got to take him by a private yacht over there. And then when we get there, you got to take me uh, in a limo. And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do all of that. I'll do all of that. And she goes, okay. But then the limo has got to have a jacuzzi in the back. And so Wilder, Wilder is that chick. Yeah? She doesn't really yeah, want yeah. She doesn't want the deal. But she's seen how far she can push you before you say, mate, do one. Oh, do you know, Rafa, that is exactly what I said on Hangouts prior to the Ruiz fight. I, I said, it's got to a point now where Joshua and Hearn should say, fine, you don't want the fight, clearly. Come back to us when you're serious. In the meantime, we're going to carry on our career. Because Joshua didn't fight from September to June. The April day at Wembley fell through because of the wilder nonsense going on. So I, I actually said on a Hangout, you know, Fury, by the time he fights with... Uh, Joshua will have been inactive nine months playing fiddle games with Wilder's team. And I said, Joshua cannot allow himself to become inactive over it. And he, I, I've said on a few hangouts, it's got to a point now where Joshua should say, do you want the fight? 
no, right, well, we're moving on. We're carrying on our career. That is the only professional way to do it. They've been messing about. They've been playing the B-side. They've been, they've been kings acting like peasants. And I just hope, I just hope that somehow it gets through to these people, the, 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 the guys who should be kings. That's what they should be called. We should be kings. They're kings who don't realize they're kings. I hope now, I hope now, it's like, it's like, I'll use another analogy. I'm full of analogies. It's like somebody who hasn't got a car, but you've got a car. And, you know, they need a lift somewhere. So they say, hey, librarian, could you give me a lift from here to there? Could you, mate? And you go, oh, well, he hasn't got a car. So you go, okay, mate. Yeah, 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 jump in. So you give him a lift from here to there. Then the day or next week, oh, mate, oh, mate, sorry to bother you. Could you give me a lift from here to there? So you, you know, feel sorry for me. He hasn't got a lift. And then that person turns around sometime later and they get a car. You've broken down. Your car's off the road. Yours in the garage. Hey, mate, could you give me a lift from here to there? Oh, sorry, mate. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've all had experience in life where we've Absolutely. done things for people yeah. we've done things for people under with subconsciously thinking well i've done it for them if they need if i needed it they'd do it for me and it never and gets it, reciprocated and it never yeah. gets reciprocated we've all been in non-reciprocal relationships we've all been in non-relation non-reciprocal relationships in one way or another at some time or the other and I don't yeah, know how. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know how I got to non-reciprocal. I don't know. I lost my thread on that one. Non-reciprocal. Um, non-reciprocal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if the boots on the other foot, that's what I'm trying to say. If the boot were on yeah, the other yeah. foot, they would not be playing the same game. They would not be singing the same tune. They would be saying, "Listen, this is the offer. Take it or leave it." And I just hope now that Eddie Hearn as and Joshua have suffered this loss. I just hope now they will learn and understand, yo, yo, this is not the way to do things. If we get to the mountaintop again, of which there is no guarantee, if we get to the, yeah, that's it. That's where I got with the non-reciprocal thing. Yeah, because we've all been there and then you learn and then it comes a point where you say, nah, I'm not going to be that soft again. I'm yeah, not yeah. going to be that soft again. And so I hope if and when and if they get back to the mountaintop, they realize that they, they, they play themselves. The and do you know something? Yeah. Do you know something, Rafa, if I may, buddy? Um, yeah. You know, if Joshua beats, d does beat Ruiz and the fight does go ahead, I, I hope there's no politic games going on on and court cases suing for violation of contract. I just hope that Ruiz honors the contract he signed and the fight happens later this year. And if Joshua wins that fight, my idea on what to do about Joshua is he gets the three belts back, says, right, that were a blip. I've addressed the blip, which I think is a very tough ask yeah. in one camp, but we'll see what happens. But if Joshua gets the belts back, hypothetically, I think he should then not even mention Deontay Wilder. I think he should just say, yep, yeah, I'm happy to have my belts back. Onwards we go. Go for pool lead mandatory. Fight Usyk. Fight Dillian White in a rematch. Fight whoever he needs to fight. And I think he should turn the cold shoulder on Deontay Wilder because once Wilder fights Ortiz, if he gets the Fury fight or not, and fights Kaunaki, there's really nothing there left for him. Whereas Joshua has a lot of options going forward. Um, and I think that kind of touching on your point of when he comes back, he should learn how to play A game. He should make Wilder chase him not the other way around. And I think he should come back if he gets them belts. All right, who, which mandatory is next? It's a mandatory. So I'm going to fight them and just go about his business and, and, and leave Wilder to chase him. That's what I think he should do. It has to be that way. It has to be that way. They, 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 they weren't acting like kings. I'll say it again. They were kings bowing down to peasants. They were chasing the girl that wouldn't play ball. No pun intended. <laughs> it, it, were, it were kind of rough and a bit like the teachers going up to Oliver Twist with the ball saying, please, Oliver, can I have some more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were cunning, crafty, manipulative, highly manipulative. And um, it's, it's just totally, it's just totally, they played the wrong game. They played the wrong game. They were, they were too appeasing. They were too appeasing. You cannot do that with these cunning, 
crafty, 60 years in the business type of people. Can't do it. Yeah, and if you remember, Rafa, um, Shelley Finkel worked with Vladimir Klitschko. And what is one of the things that Vladimir Klitschko fight negotiations are famed for? Absolutely brutal-sided, one-sided contracts offered to the opponents of Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. And Shelly Finkel had a hand in that. So I find it really strange that he's dictating all these terms now when he worked with a fighter who was famous for what they termed slave contracts, where fighters had to sign the most ridiculous um, conditions to even get a Vladimir Klitschko fight, getting low percentages, you know, having small dressing rooms, having this and that, <laughs> you know, and then they've got the goal to challenge Anthony Joshua on what he's offering Deontay Wilder. I just find it a bit hypocritical. That's but like awesome, you say, awesome he, he's an old head. He's an old head in sport. He's an old head in the port sport, knows every trick in the game. It's just crazy how they've just turned things around. Master manipulators, utter master manipulators of the game. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. They were, Shelley Finkel was one of the masterminds of the one-sided, the one-sided uh, contract. He was one of the masterminds of it, as demonstrated in his one-sided contracts for Klitschko as boxing librarian has just correctly pointed out. And uh, now they're talking about 50-50 is the only way. 50-50 is the only way. It's total and absolute manipulation. It's hypocrisy. It is, it's just, listen, Hearn has to learn from this. He's young in the game. Him plus his father, they equal about 30 years. They're going, it's 30 years versus 60 years on the Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel side, you know? Well, if you remember, Rafa, um, I don't know if you remember back in 2015 when um, Deontay Wilder again showed this kind of uh, mindset him and some of his team all both have. Um, when talk of a Vladimir Klitschko fight came up after he'd beaten Stiverne in build-up to his first defence against Eric Molina, um, it were quizzed on a Vladimir Klitschko fight. And, you know, Deontay Wilder supporters never mentioned this, but Deontay Wilder did that interview. And people did videos on YouTube criticising him because he was saying... Well, yes, of course, a Vladimir Klitschko fight can happen, but I have the green belt. I've got the real belt. If Vladimir wants to fight me and take my belt, he has to fight on my terms where I say the fight is. Even Mad. though he'd only just won a strap and Klitschko had been a champion for nearly 10 years. Mad. Even then, Deontay Wilder was saying, no, the Klitschko fight can happen, but it's got to be in America. It's got to be where I want it to be, and it's got to be on my terms which kind of was an early indication of where him and his team were taking the negotiation part of his career. Yeah. So basically what they were doing from pretty much day one was saying, was making unreasonable demands, unreasonable terms, knowing nobody's not going to bow to them. Nobody's going to bow to them and they can go on and eat their bowl of cherries one by one. Yeah, and, and the re one really key point in that, Rafa, is they use this tactic in all the dangerous fights. You know, mm -hmm. the Eric Molinas and Dwalpuses, they weren't really as bothered. But any mention of Vladimir Klitschko, Anthony Joshua, um, all this other stuff, suddenly out comes the crazy negotiation tactics. So to me, it's either a lack of confidence on his team's part or his part or both. Um, but it's like you say, a way of stalling out the fight until the thing, well, we've no else to lose now. Even if Deontay loses, he's made all these millions, he's done all this, you know, more of a retirement package fight, you know. <laughs> the retirement plan, the retirement plan. But yeah, they made the, they made the fight with Fury so easy. It was so easy. It was so easy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they got about four to six million a piece, reputedly. You know, Fury got four or five, Wilder got six or seven. Um, but now for Joshua, oh, it's got to be a hundred million for one fight. <laughs> it yeah, Deontay, so, that'll happen. Yeah. It should it should be so blatant be clear to people now that they're making unreasonable demands while he's making unreasonable demands because you don't want the fight yeah absolutely and some people you know when he turned down his own deal of 100 million or 120 million whatever it was yeah and some 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 of his fans were then saying 
that's a low ball. He deserves a quarter of a billion. <laughs> they were saying, that's a low ball. It, they offered him 120 million, but Wilder deserves 250 million for three fights. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. <laughs> crazy. Oh, man, it kind of sickens me, to be honest. It kind of sickens me, but they've got to be wiser. My final word on this episode is is to, to, to Boxing Librarian in the chat. They have, the Hearn side have to be wiser. And they just have to call it like, you just have to call it like you see it sometimes. Sometimes honesty is the best policy. You see something that's BS, you just have to say that is BS. That's my policy. Just call it like you see it. It's like catchphrase. Life sometimes is just like catchphrase. You know, you know, you know the game catchphrase? Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to watch like, it back in yeah, the day. I used yeah. to watch it back in the Dizzy. You see the thing coming up on the screen. You see the shapes. They move another square out the way. They move another pixel. And you've got to call what you see. And sometimes yeah, absolutely, yeah. your best in, your best stuff in life to me to just call it like you see it. And that sometimes can stop some of the BS or at least expose the BS. It will either stop the BS or expose the BS. And that's yeah. what... I, I totally agree, Rafa. And I think for maybe um, we've mentioned having a hookup down line as well, a future hangout, maybe Absolutely. a good topic would be, um, you know, some of this stuff on maybe how the boxing uh, um, establishment can combat this kind of thing. Because I think that often, a bit like back in the day, we're like, I, I use an old story. Um, there were a fighter called Joe Jeanette, who was now in the Hall of Fame. He won at best heavyweights of his era, um, along with Jack Johnson and Sam Langford. And he challenged Jack Johnson to a fight. Um, and this shows, even going back all this way, this stuff happened. Jeanette challenged Jack Johnson to a fight. Um, and Jack Johnson said, um, no, um, I won't accept the fight. You've got to beat Sam Langford first. So, oh, no, sorry, it was the other way around. It was Langford challenged Johnson, and then Johnson said, uh, Johnson were offered $20,000 for a fight with Langford. Yeah. And Johnson said, well, no, I'm not going to fight you. Uh, you have to beat Joe Jeanette first, and Joe Jeanette's way better than you, and he's going to beat you. Um, so I won't have to fight you anyway. I'll fight Jeanette. Now, what happened is, after Johnson turned that offer down, Jeanette and Langford fought two months later. Langford beat Jeanette. And then when Langford went back to Johnson saying, right, do you take the fight now for 20,000? Jack Johnson suddenly changed and said, no, I want 50,000 now. Hmm. <laughs> so the fight never happened. Wow. You know, this stuff's wow. gone on as long as boxing has been around. But I think that it damages the sport. And I think that something needs to be done or something surely could be done. Um, but it wouldn't be the alphabet bodies who did it that could kind of control um, in a way the splits in big fights. So I really think we need a worldwide governing body for the sport. A bit like FIFA. Yes. A bit like a bit. Uh, you mentioned Formula One earlier. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've always been kind of a Formula One fan. I love watching Formula One. Right. Um, Ayrton Senna's my favourite driver. Yeah. Uh, Nelson Piquet and all these guys. So. Oh, the old guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, they have a, they have a governing body that is very brutal, as you'll know, Rafa, in Absolutely. regulations and conditions. And I think boxing needs the same. And I think it needs a structure there where fighters can't pull these techniques, you know, where they get told, this is a percentage you, can, you get for this fight. Take it or leave it. Uh, if they don't take it, they don't take it. The other fighter moves on. Yeah, I really think that... Uh, <laughs> I really think that, that, that Hearn... I hope... I just hope that if they ever become A-side again, that they, they start acting like the A-side. Maybe, start rapper... Maybe we can start a Twitter campaign um, and I'll something. go on to Eddie Earn and say, Eddie, learn the A-side, okay? If you get your titles back, make Wilder feed from you. Uh, maybe we could all, like, you know, go on his Twitter and you watch a do something. mini campaign. I'm going to have to start using my Twitter. I've got one. I, I, I'm going to have to research my uh, password. But we're definitely going to have to start some kind of campaign, me and UBL. Anybody who wants to join in, join in. Please learn about how to be a side learn how a side moves look at study the kings study the kings even study dictators it doesn't matter study the kings of the past look how they move you weren't moving like kings you were bowing down to peasants just one of the quick point, Rafa, yeah. quickly. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson is regarded as one of the greatest fighters who ever lived. Yes. He was absolutely 
brutal. Sugar Ray Robinson was the A side. Yeah. And he played that with a hammer. There was, I can't remember which fight it was, but there was one fight where he'd been paid in advance $30,000 to secure him for this fight. And the training camps were going and progressing. And then three days, three days before the fight took place, yeah. Ray Robinson, who was famous for like having good times and splurging money, went back to the opposing camp and said, I want another 40000 And they said, we're not sure we can pay you that. And Robinson said, well, if you don't pay me that, the fight's off. Uh -oh. And because Robinson was the name he was, yeah, those fighters who fought him couldn't afford to throw fights away with him because it was their chance at superstardom. And, and you know, Robinson was brutal in negotiations. Sugar Ray Robinson would never have been pandering to Wilder's demands for the last 18 months like Hernas and Joshua. Right. He, he'd have cast him aside like a, like a stone on beach. He right. wouldn't have had that. He wouldn't have had that. It's got to be the way. It's got to be the way forward. If they make it back to that mountaintop, they have got to start acting like kings and not and not bowing down to peasants. Absolutely. I totally agree, Rafa. I totally agree. Okay, boxing librarian. I know that you probably gotta go now. And it has been have you got to go now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah, I thought I, so. I were on like three hours we unrivaled yesterday, and then wow. I, I was so excited because we had wow. a great chat. I, I wow. couldn't sleep and been tired all day. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I know love talking you. boxing, so when I talk yeah. boxing, I get excited. So yeah, well now I know the trick. I'll be baiting you in more often. I'll say, yeah, but BL, you don't you don't want to jump in for 10 minutes. So no, 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 now I know the route. Boxing Librarian, um, everybody smash that like button in appreciation for Boxing Librarian. It's always a pleasure to have him on. I didn't think I'd be able to wangle him on so quickly after the last time a couple of weeks ago. So it's an absolute pleasure to have his boxing mind and have his calm logic in our presence. Boxing Librarian, my appreciation to you, sir. And um, it's my turn to go on your thing next time, I think. Oh, that'd be great, Rafa. Um, before, I, before I get off, I'd just like to say to everybody in the chat, um, thank you to Rafa for having me. Thank you to all you guys for supporting Rafa's channel, a great down-to-earth boxing channel where you get great boxing chat. So everybody keep liking, everybody keep sharing links to Rafa's channel. Throw your full support behind him, um, as I do. And Rafa, we can hook up, I'm sure, again, either on my channel or your channel. Way, um, I'm at your disposal, okay? So if That's ever awesome. you want me on to discuss a topic, just hit me up and we'll sort it out, no problem. That is awesome, my friend. Once again, that was Boxing Librarian Live. By all means, go and check out his channel. Great, great, great content. Thank you, Boxing Librarian. Yeah, thank you, Rafa. Take care, buddy. Until next time. Most definitely. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye and bye to everyone in chat. Excellente. Excellente. So we we have creation to you, my friend. Pablo Diablo. Great show. Big up the librarian, most definitely, 100%. Aaron Mason, big up the librarian, most definitely, very generous with his time. We have been blessed with his company. Get this um, Red Glove Militant. In this judge, judge, judge's court time works off different rule. I don't know what that conversation is. We're talking about Formula One there. Ricardo is a better driver than Hamilton, is he? I don't know about that, mate. I don't know about that. I haven't watched Formula One in a while. But uh, I thought that uh, Hamilton was the numero uno, the King Hancho. Was he, is he not? Is he not? Is he not? Where are we, Helen Bond? Ricardo is the only genuine guy. Okay. I don't know. I can't speak on it. I haven't watched Formula One. In a while, it used to be one of my favorite things back in the Dizay. <laughs> Aaron Mason says, Low, Wild Deck going on about holding belts hostage. No Wild Deck can talk about holding belts hostage. Wilder is the number one hostage taker when it comes to that green strap, the gangrene strap, the gangrene belt. Blessed channel, says Red Gloved Militant. 
Pablo Diablo says we was Kangs <laughs> in reference to in reference to Hearn and Joshua. They're gonna have to learn how to be kings. They're gonna have to learn how to be kings. <laughs> They're gonna have to learn how to be kings. Get this smoke. I see what you mean now, Aaron. Get this smoke says these guys want to hold belts hostage, really. That's your boy Wilder and the Wildettes singing in the background. What else have we got here? Talking about Formula One, lots of Formula One talk. Get this smoke, says this guy is talk completely biased. No, I think if you're talking about me, then no. I mean, I, you know, I talk about every, every, all of the guys. I talk about all of the guys. If you're talking about BL, no, very wise man. Historian, boxing historian. Okay, lots of F1 Formula One talk. Trying to get through that. I brought it up, people. Obviously, a lot of Formula One lovers in here. Yeah, people, anyone who has not smashed the like button already, please kindly do so. If you're here and you're watching the show and you've been enjoying the show, then please kindly smash that like button smash it hit it hard she's biz is in the building big up she's biz okay has it moved yeah it's moved the like button has moved where are we okay scrolling through i am scrolling through <laughs> okay now do we go for a last topic do we go for a last topic <laughs> responses in the chat do we go for a last topic Why not, says Aaron Mason. We could go for a last topic. How long have we been on? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Red Glove Militant says yes. Ped says yes. Let's see that like button move, ladies and gentlemen. I know Pablo Diablo says yes. Helen Bond, let's get back to boxing. Hashtag let's get back to boxing. Let me see that like button move. If you would be so kind. I know there's people in here. Yes, says she's biz. I know there's people in here who have not smashed that like button. Let us see that like button move. Okay, so the last one. Let it fly. Let it fly. Let it fly. Okay, a last topic to get us smooth, to ease us out of here. The last topic to ease us out of here is... <laughs> the last topic to ease us out of here is conflict of interest. We're going to talk about the conflict... Yeah, Helen Bond, let's talk about boxing, Helen. I hate to uh, get you off the Formula One, but uh, 
Let's bring it back to boxing, shall we? Helen, let's bring it back to boxing. Okay, right. So the last topic, the last topic is going to be conflicts of interest in boxing. We touched on it earlier on. We're going to round it up in a nice little parcel. And it's called conflicts of interest in boxing. Now, we've recently seen in the Breedis Glawaki fight, a little fly trying to catch it. We've recently seen in the Breedis Glawaki, Glawaki fight, the referee, Bird, and his wife, Adelaide Bird, both working on the same fight. This is a really quick one. It's a really quick one. It's a vote. If we're back on boxing, it's a vote. Now, my question is to you to round this thing off, round this baby off. My question is, is does that represent a conflict of interest to have a husband or to have one partner in a marriage as a referee and the other person, the other partner as a judge? It's the last thing. It's our last topic. Does that represent a conflict of interest? The fight was held over in Latvia. Latvia? Lithuania? Lithuania? Latvia? Is that the same place? Lithuania? Latvia? Yeah, Latvia. So, the question is, smash that like button, folks. The question is, yeah, she's biz. I don't know if you were in here earlier. I don't know if you were in the building earlier, but uh, I saw this picture. I saw this picture and I saw that something wrong was with the picture. Something wrong is with the picture. And what is wrong with the picture is that over the shoulder of Breedis, over the left shoulder of Breedis, Am I sharing? I hope I'm sharing. Where are we? Yeah. Over the... What the hell? Where did it go? Over the shoulder of Breedis, the left shoulder, we see this lady here in the big rimmed glasses. And her name is Adelaide Bird. This man here, I can't remember his first name, is, I think, something Bird. He's a bird as well. Two birds. Birds of a feather. Bird and bird. Bird and bird. So, the question is, it's the last thing. It's the last thing. Last topic. The question is, does this represent a conflict of interests? That is the question. She's biz. Husband and wife taking envelopes. She's biz. Latvia. Red Glove Militant. It can. Aaron Mason says Teddy Atlas did a podcast on this and says that promoters take the judges and the ref to dinner the night before a fight. So... He says, tell me that the fights aren't decided over dinner. Yeah, unless it's a knockout. <laughs> Pablo says, seems a bit dodgy. Would that be allowed in the UK or the US? Yeah, I think it would. I think it would. Yeah, seems certainly seems dodgy. Pablo Diablo, Boxing Librarian Live says, I get this smoke. And your comments, and from your comments, you are clearly not biased towards Wild. You are clearly not biased towards Wilder. <laughs> Great response, BL. Red Glove Militant. The lady in the background cannot score fights worth doo doo. Indeed. There she is. The lady in the background. 
That's what's wrong with the picture. <laughs> Red Glove Militant Boxing Librarian Live. Yes, she's biz. That ref needs to retire. He's 74 years old. Couldn't hear the bell being rung. It was a very loud place, but I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe they should give, maybe they should uh, put electric collars. Maybe they should strap uh, electric collars around refs so they could just give them a little jolt if they haven't heard the end of the belt, the end of the round. Maybe that's the answer. Serious Aaron, that's well dodgy. Very, very dodgy. Aaron Mason, evidently, if that's true, then this is a conflict of interest. I don't get that. Boxing librarian, get this smoke. I didn't say whether you spoke factually or not. I'll look at my comment. Um, no, I didn't mention that. I said you were clearly biased towards Wilder. Get this smoke. I think it's very clear. I think it's very clear that you're, you're, you're biased towards Wilder, my friend. It's very, very clear indeed. Yes, Breed is said. I'm glad that we're back on boxing. Formula One's over now. Yes. Red Gold Merton said that, that Breedis said he heard the bell. Yes, it has been reported, indeed reported. I've read that report that Breedis joked that he heard the bell. He said he heard the bell. Breedis certainly said that he heard the bell. And Breedis also acknowledged that he, that he, was a little bit dirty. He got a little bit dirty. He got a little bit dirty. He got a little bit dirty. He acknowledged that. He admitted that. Helen Bond makes a good point. She says, Pablo, the promoters pay the refs and the judges. Until that changes, we won't get there will be, well, she says we won't get fair fights. We can get fair fights, but there will be always that possibility. I will say there will always be that possibility for manipulation. There will always be that po possibility for manipulation. <laughs> there will always be that possibility for manipulation. I saw that Teddy Atlas. I think Teddy Atlas saw said that on Joe Rogan. On the Joe Rogan podcast. He said it on the Joe Rogan podcast. I saw that. Yeah. Promoters taking people out for dinner. Referees out for dinner. Judges out for dinner. That, that kind of stuff has to be abolished. There has to be a distance. There has to be a distance between the promoters and the judges to maintain the integrity of the sport. To maintain the integrity, to get honest results. We can't have these conflicts like the referee being the husband of a judge or vice versa. That would be totally unacceptable. There needs to be a change. There needs to be a change. Get this smoke. You are clearly a biased fellow. You came into the chat biased a few weeks ago when you started coming over. Um, that's okay that you're biased. We recognize that. We recognize your position. We know what your position is. Uh, there is no ambiguity, my friend. You don't have to hate Wilder, but it is clear that you your bias is towards Wilder. That, my friend, is very, very clear. No question about it. No question, no doubt about it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is coming up to the midnight hour. Anybody who's still in the chat who has not smashed that like button, please kindly do so. Please kindly do so. I don't know. 
no, there's like there's another chat going on here with get this smoke talking about a different topic. I don't know. Do I engage in this topic or do I not? I don't think so. Maybe if you want to raise that topic next time, smack that like button, says Ped. You want to see that thing creep up? We've had the pleasure of boxing librarian. Yes, get this smoke. Get this smoke. We know that you're biased towards Wilder. Why would you pretend otherwise, my friend? But nonetheless, get this smoke. You can continue this dialogue next time. Today is Monday. We've been on for about two and a half hours now. I think that's quite sufficient. But yes, get this smoke. We do know that you are biased, my friend. But nobody, nobody worries about your bias. It's very clear. But it would be awkward. You'd be unfortunate if you pretended you weren't biased towards towards Wilder, because that is very clear. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> boxing library is still going strong. <laughs> but uh I had to give him time to D to D to, to to loosen up because after you do one of these things, after you do one of these things, it's like being at the theater. Not that I've ever been at the theater. Not that I've ever been a theater actor or anything of that nature. Pedro says, Ped Pablo Diablo rather, says another cracking show, Rafi. Peace out, guys. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. But yeah, I've seen programs. I've seen a program where these Aaron Mason says, great show, Rafi. Aaron Mason, much appreciated. It's a shame Tommy Temple wasn't around to uh, enjoy the show. Never mind. All right, so Aaron Mason, who's Aaron Mason? I mean, Tommy Temper. Don't know where Tommy Temper's been AWOL tonight. So, anyway. <laughs> so, yes, I totally enjoyed it. Oh, Tommy Temper's still here. Okay. All right, so it's been another good show, another great show. We've had the presence of boxing librarian we've had the good fortune of a great weekend of boxing get this smoke says he's allergic to facts we understand get this smoke we perfectly understand don't worry don't worry young man we will lead you towards the light fear not fear not i almost feel bad about stopping the thing because Boxing Librarian is educating Get This Smoke. I don't know. I'm tempted to close the thing down. But Box... 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused. What, what does one do? What does one do? Because there's a strong chat going on between Boxing Librarian and Get This Smoke. I don't have to repeat what they're saying because you'll see it come up in the replay. When you replay... I haven't been paying attention to get this smoke. I haven't been paying attention to get this smoke. No, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. It's bedtime. It's bedtime for the Rafi. I send me a link. What do you mean? What do you mean I send me a link? Are you talking to me? <laughs> Boxing librarian, do you want do you want to jump back on so you can address this guy? Boxing librarian, do you want to jump on so you can address this guy? I think you need to jump back on and just finish this off. Boxing librarian, do you want to jump on? Boxing librarian, do you want to jump on and so you can address this guy directly? <laughs> Send me the link too. 
Boxing Librarian, I think you need to finish this thing because I was going to finish the show, but it ain't finished. I think you need to come back on and address this guy directly. Just, just finish it. Finish him. I think boxing like I think boxing like Rarin is changing rooms. He's moving from one room to another. I think he's resetting. I think he's resetting. I think boxing librarian's gonna come back on. Yo, get this smoke. This is some rude talking. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. BL will show get this smoke who the real joke is. Boxing librarian, I think you need to come back on and finish this. I think you need to just... I think this the same link still works, no? Let me send you the link again, because it seems like you need to... This is something that needs to be... Uh, I think you need to address address get this smoke directly. I'm tired of this what? What are you I Yeah, maybe. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. There's drama. There's drama in the show, and the, the light button still hasn't moved. I don't get that. I don't see why the light button is not moving. What's there not to like? What is there not to like? I don't see why the light button is not moving. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe boxing librarian's not hearing me. Maybe I need to write it. Yeah, I don't understand why the light button's not moving. Yeah, I just want to give, yes, I just want to, I just want to give Boxing Librarian, I mean, Red Glove Militant, I mean, no, I mean, uh, get this smoke, uh, I just want to give BL the opportunity, if he wants to jump back on to finish, finish uh, this, this, this debate with get this smoke. I just want to give him the opportunity if he wants to. But I know he's probably got work in the morning early. He's probably got work in the morning early, so that's probably going to disrupt his sleep pattern. But I just want to give him the opportunity. I just feel like I have to give. Yeah, I'm the ref. Because the thing seems like the thing ain't done. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, 
Okay. Maybe boxing librarian. So I work in the morning, obviously. It's probably gone to bed. Probably gone to bed. But I just wanted to uh I just wanted to give the opportunity. But I think boxing librarian said all he needs to say. Yeah, come back on uh come back on Wednesday, get this smoke. I think we're done here. It's midnight. It's midnight. That's two hours forty-five. Two hours forty-five. Okay. So once again, this is the real end of the show. We really have come to the end of the show. He may have left the building. I think he's left the building. People got work. It's midnight over here in the UK. So that's how we do it. This is Rafael Dawkins. It's Combat Radio. No, my friend, I've got to, I've got to sleep. I've got sleep to go to. I've got sleep to go to, my friend. <laughs> I've got sleep to go to. Laters. Okay, so it's live boxing talk with Rafi. It's Aaron Mason. The AA Blunts has joined us. It's the Peds. Get this smoke has been rather contentious. Yeah, exactly. He works for a living. The man works for a living. He was with us for over an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boxing librarians got work to go to the morning, like all like most of us. So we can't be gall gallivanting around. We got we got work in the morning. You got work in the morning. But I'm sure the boxing librarian would be more than happy to uh, educate you, my friend. Cal L, peace out. Red Glove Militant. <laughs> peace out, Red Glove Militant. Aaron Mason, fair playmate. <laughs> Peds, get this smoke. Red Glove Militant. The boxing librarian, our guest for the night. So many. So many to mention. Tommy Temper. Pablo Diablo. And many, many more. Helen Bond was in the place. She's Biz was in the place. Red Glove Militant. John Dealey. How could we forget John Dealey? And of course, Kaz paid us a visit. So, it's Raphael Dawkins, it's Combat Radio, it's live boxing talk with Rafi. Raphael Dawkins, Combat Radio, it's been a pleasure. Great having Boxing Librarian on. And the last words are peace and blessed and i'm out